There we go. Something was bugged in OBS, but here we are. Hello everyone, and welcome to this week's session of Tales from Tawatha. We're bringing you the stories of adventure, danger, loss, and heroic triumph from a land within our imaginations. Bringing you these tales today is Narrative of the Drowned. Hello. Cora Hilltopple. Me, me. <laughs> Harbacure Toll Middle Eek. Hello everyone. Lost. I'm a big wolf now. <laughs> Chance. I'm still in chains. And Welgwyn Woodbarrel. Hello. Thank you for being with us today to share in our tale. Here is what happened last time. After being ushered out of Teluria's office by Visor Addison, Welgwyn decided to o try to overhear his conversation with Teluria, while Cora distracted the Visor accompanying Addison, Visor Delantimos but the two were ultimately unable to eavesdrop. Teluria returned to the party and pled with them to head to Port Greyshallow to shore up the local law enforcement against the syndicate and other criminal activity there. She offered to make the party all honorary silver blades at Visor Addison's request if they agree to assist Lothuria during this crisis. Our heroes agreed and set out to find safe lodging for the night, checking every corner for assassins sent by the syndicate. Nerida went shopping for a scrying focus and placed a crystal ball on hold at a shop known as the Magician's Apprentice. Meanwhile, Welgwyn and Chance went to meet their banker, Troyax, at his bakery, Sweet Loaf. They were told to return in an hour to make their withdrawal, but when they did, they were captured by Borlin, a prominent member of the syndicate. While the rest of the party was waiting for the return of their compatriots at the Soft Sands Inn, a woman arrived at the front desk, making quite a fuss. She was distraught and explained that her father had gambled away their home that he had also sold to a merchant, and now the merchant might kill her or sell her into slavery. She begged the party to help her, but they didn't believe her story, and she resulted to threatening their friends, revealing that she was, in fact, syndicate bait. The party agreed to go with her to find their friends, but kept their guard up the entire time. She led them to an alleyway where Borland stood over them and sprung the ambush upon them. With some quick thinking, our heroes made short work of the syndicate thugs and rescued Chance and Welgwyn, who are being held nearby. And that brings us to now. Fortunately, Lost got fleas <laughs> during that ordeal. <laughs> that was quick. I pretty much already had fleas, probably. <laughs> so let's take a look at. Well, let's do TTS Zoom. <laughs> well, it was well, a syndicate this... base. I think we should take a look around carefully. Lost is still up on the roof as a, a great <laughs> wolf. Chance and Welgwyn, you've sort of emerged from the the holding cells or basement area where you were. All right, guys. Next time we will tell you where we're going. Um, obviously, that you was a mistake this time rolls. around. Um, yeah. So the sweet rolls. Oh my God, it's the worst. We did, and then. We left them when we got abducted. <sighs> but if we go back, we can get them. And also, maybe we can get a bunch of money. Maybe not. We'll see. We can get to that in a minute. Just can't believe you could trade Middle us. of the night. Why do you mean we can get for sweet so rolls? Long. So, um, the bakery was obviously not a bakery. Obviously, we were trying to go get money from our banker. Um, it kind of also was a bakery. It is also a bakery, that's true. So we did also technically, yes, get baked goods. Um, but we also did, yeah, get kidnapped uh, by the syndicate, which was a Obviously. bummer. And it turns out that our banker has turned on us. So there should be a ton of money sitting around here somewhere. Dragonborns are supposed to be loyal. That's the whole point. Well, I say we go back there and clean them out as a thank you. I mean, it's syndicate guys as always. 
It's not his fault. I still think we should clean him out as a thank you. <laughs> I mean, stealing is wrong, but... He stole from us first. Stealing from lowlifes is not really stealing. It's just... He took our covering our stolen treats. wealth. I gotta say, Leek, you got a real questionable god. I like him every, more every day. Well, either way, we obviously can't trust him with the rest of the money that we had saved with him, so we're gonna have to go and uh, get that if we want to keep it. This this money, you you acquired it Super legally. legally. Yeah, assume. yeah, very, very legally. I would say why, extremely why legally. Why use in fact. such a dubious <laughs> banker, then? That's... Uh, you know, just, in, uh, uh, you know, um... no, you're asking a lot of questions and we should probably be getting out of here or looking around rather than talking. It's all about, it's all about, uh, uh interest rates. We can talk about it later. Let's look around this place and oh, see if there's anything interest. here. Okay. Okay. Cause you know, my, my, my great uncle, actually, he avoided using the banks and he <laughs> made his own bank because you see he wasn't <laughs> trusting of the gnomish bank. <laughs> Cora, and, stop uh... dying. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Uh, all right, let's look around. I guess fine. It's fine. I I trust you. You've never committed any illegal acts, so no, no, you're good folk. Totally never knowingly. <laughs> all right, so you're going to basically investigate the building. Yeah. So uh, go ahead and roll investigation. Anyone who wants to assist can um, also assist. I want to find traps. Sorry, my fingers. Okay, you want to? Are you casting detect traps? Oh, it would be helpful. Investigate better than you. Oh, wow. I, the exact same. For once. Oh. You open. would be helpful. Mine's just a flat 16. It's kind of inter inappropriate music. <laughs> oh, wow. Put totals in chat, maybe. I don't know what your bonuses are. I uh, also, um, I can't see anything but the chat. Yeah. Right. So you cast Find Traps. Uh, da, da, da. Since... Uh, no, it's fine. You don't sense any traps. Okay. In the entire building, you sort of do like a once-over. I know it's instant and line of sight, but we'll say like... It covers some area or something like that. We need to rework oh, fine traps. <clears throat> it says 120 feet, I think. Mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah, but it's also like within line of sight, which is kind of goofy. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I, think, guys, I feel I like it's a big holdover. From, it detects like, traps in the places you could already detect traps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, really. Well, I think we're okay as far as I can tell. I'm um, still trying to be cautious, but I don't sense anything. <laughs> We'll say it's like a 20 meter radius and you don't need line of sight because that makes way more sense. Thank you, yeah. Or whatever, 20 foot radius. Okay, so you sort of go around and search the building. There seems to be a, a normal-ish fire pit. The downstairs appears fairly normal as if it were just somebody's house here in Lothuria, or in Thaura rather. And uh, there's a fire pit. There seem to be some cooking utensils. There's like a dining room table. Upstairs is a little different. There are some bunk beds. There is a, one bed that is not a bunk bed that's overturned and propped up uh, facing the window. This is not really supposed to be there. There is a bookshelf with some random collection of books on it. And there is a bunch of stuff all over the floor. There's a cabinet here and also sort of a rack with what appear to be jars of strange miscellaneous substances, perhaps. You're not really sure what that is. Um, there are clothes sort of strewn about on the floor. One of the bunk beds seems to be kept a, a bit messier than the other. And at this bunk bed on the left, at the base of it, there is what looks like some kind of strange toy on the floor at the foot of the bunk bed is an intricate toy a doll dressed as a merchant uh, stands before a covered cart set up as a merchant stall and laden with goods uh, so you can investigate that further if you want you also if you're investigating i assume you're like searching through things and looking for anything that might be hidden yeah, yeah. 
Okay, so you also find beneath the mattress of this bunk bed, where the toy is at the foot, you find what appears to be uh, a small leather-bound notebook. On the front cover is embossed an upturned crescent, cradling three stars. Can I take a read through that notebook and see what's inside? Sure, upon opening the notebook, it appears to be some sort of journal. Flipping through the pages, you see what appear to be dates in the top right corner of each page, though if the dates are accurate, the pages are out of order. The journal also appears fairly new, despite containing dates from nearly a century ago. Three As you're flipping through, three pages in particular sort of catch your eye, as they also contain the crest of the moon with three stars. If you continue your search in this cupboard, you find all of your gear and equipment just kind of hastily stashed. It seems they didn't have time to package it or move it anywhere else. They just kind of kept it here with you, so. I would like to put my clothes back on. <laughs> I heard they checked my pockets. Did they leave it? <laughs> all the cheese. Uh, you find some moldy cheese <laughs> in your pockets. Ah, oh, this will be great. That's the best kind of cheese. <laughs> moldy pocket cheese. The best yes, kind yes. of cheese. Alley ah. 2020. That's right. <laughs> you don't need materials for stinking cloud, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> if you want, you can further investigate this strange merchant cart toy. Yeah, let's check that out and see what that is. Okay. Lost, I assume you're gonna not be a wolf? He said, yeah, he was coming back. He wanted to join, turn back to normal and come back to the rest of okay. us. Okay. I, I did say that. Uh, I mean, I typed this. It. I didn't Alec. realize you were back, my bad. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. There it is there. Where is Welgwen? I don't want to delete I'll uh, guidance oh, her as well. No, okay, cool. check it out. Okay. Nerida rests her hand. Oh my god, this is going to take a while to delete all this stuff. Rests her hand on your shoulder and casts guidance. Actually, roll a wisdom check to make sure you can. That's all you, babe. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> No. You reach out to Umberly and you feel your connection is heavily disrupted. It doesn't seem to be working. Uh, I'm so sorry. This far from the sea, I just, I don't know what's happening, but I can't reach her. All right. Upon closer inspection of the merchant cart let's get this in here and just brighten it up let's do this and this. The merchant stands with arms spread wide and palms facing upwards, bearing a large, welcoming grin. He stands atop a small circular stone disc attached to a stone platform which connects to the cart at its base. Within the cart are various goods, a bunch of bananas, a short curved sword, a goblet, a monkey in a cage, a fine jeweled necklace, a simple pot, and a woven basket. The cart bears, on its arch, an upturned crescent encircling three stars, which you notice are actually gems, encrusted into the cart itself. It seems to be secured to the stone beneath it and faces to the left of the merchant. At the head of the cart, a sizable brown stallion is tethered, wearing a thin leather barding embossed with the name Jack. Here is, Here are the three relevant pages from the quote-unquote journal you've discovered. Mm -hmm. 
Tell me if you can right click on them and change the state of them. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so you can flip through the pages and I'll remind you of the calendar so you can understand how dates work in this universe. see if I have a chat. Let's go. <laughs> it's 12 Umber Hulks in disguise, yes. If you have trouble reading it, you can hold Alt and it will, um, as you mouse over it, and it will just present it to you basically. Get a Steam chat going with everybody. We may have to read it, I guess. I, I don't, or I guess I can Amma can watch on the uh, on the TV and see it. Here's the link to the calendar. It's a little hard to read that way, but I can kind of make it out. How about this? Cool. Thanks. Okay. Um, the last page is not working for me. Do you not see it? It's just sort of like a striking. It's just white. It just, it, there's no like writing visible on it or anything. Is that true for anyone else? I mean, no, I mean it went by too fast for me to read it um, in its entirety. I don't know about it might just be a problem. Mm, that any of them for some reason. It might just, mine might just not be loading right, to be honest. Okay, oh. well, I mean, well, there we go. Oh, God. How about that? How about now? Is that better? <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry. It. It freaked out and is re like texturizing yeah, everything. Yeah, like it should be doing that. A, yeah. Okay. Is this like um ground plane also where the cart is? Like, is it a model of grass? This is a model. Is model. There's no there's no grass or anything. Just, okay, so it's just this toy. It's just on the floor. I can Still not working for me. Here, do you want to just come over here? Yeah, I'll just mm, check it out. I don't know. <laughs> Someone could also just read it out loud or... So, um, Welgren, you have this like, journal. I'll turn to Welgren and, like, do you see any, like, buttons or, like, indentations or anything we could interact with on it? <laughs> It's a clue, or a series of clues. Ren three, Yitra. Yeah, that's what I think too. But just wondering if the cart has anything on it that we could, like, it press or the touch directions or... And it mentions turn. the objects sold, and we see the objects here. So it's something related to that. Yeah, I'm thinking like the directions too. Like, either like use the directions on the cart. You know, if there's like things we can move on it, or uh, do you want to, it, do you want to try to investigate in the right direction? I do asked invest... Welgwen to because yeah. I'm not very good at finding. I'm asking Welgwen, does she want to investigate the cart more closely to see if there are any levers or buttons or anything? Do you want to investigate the cart more closely? Yes. Okay, I would roll another investigation, and unfortunately, you're not getting. Uh... One second, I have to roll you an investigation. <laughs> And I rolled you a good one. Hey, it's great. Uh, the cart is pretty intricate. You notice that towards the top of the cart, like on the roof, um, there is a very subtle crease that's extremely difficult to notice. It goes exactly with the, the grain and tiling of the cart uh, sort of texture itself. 
but you sort of gently, you know, push everything. You like push on the lantern. You try to like push the horse. Uh, I don't know what it's called. The thing that attaches the the horse, the yoke to the cart. You try to like push, see if anything's a lever or anything's a button, and nothing seems to happen. The cart is basically uh, like welded to the base too. The wheels don't turn. Basically, everything on it is immobile. Can I pick the whole thing up off of the ground? You can. So you sort of. You can grab the cart and lift, uh, and as you do, the base comes with it, and the merchant who's attached to the base standing out front, and the horse, they're all sort of attached and if seem like, like tap, a singular piece. But the I merchant on, seems yeah. like, he's, he's on this sort of like circular platform, which you can rotate freely like this. Hmm, if I spin it, does it sound like any, like, like it might be a lock or something like that? Is there any sound from any other part that seems to correspond with that? It spins rather smoothly until it's in one of the cardinal directions and then it kind of clicks into place. But you can then spin it again. It just requires a slight bit of force to move it from its position. It doesn't make so any I noise, it's just like notches. Yeah. So I think we'll need to have him face the right directions and put the the goods in the right cardinal directions as well. Maybe it'll which, open along the seam that you happen to find. Which way is north right now in, in relation to this cart? And you map? can pick up the cart and move it freely. So you could pick up the cart and rotate it. Um, so it might just um, be that the cart is to the north of him at any time? Well, just there was something about how the cart was brought to like a northern tower. Maybe that more, means it's facing north. More how the cart faces, because if the cart is facing north, that means that he's facing a different direction. Since, like, that's the head of the cart, right? Or maybe. Yeah. Do we maybe know how? Hmm. If you want, um, you feel like. If, if at any, just as a DM note, if at any point you feel like this is sort of not intuitive, you can roll an investigation to see if your character sort of understands what's going on or, or mm -hmm. can pick out key phrases within the journal. Yeah, well, I can't really see the journal, but I, part of it that I could see is like he's facing south in the shadow of the cart, which is facing east and stuff like that. So I think we want to use that as a guide for how to have him face in relation to the cart and then pay attention to what items it's mentioning too. Probably. Yeah, I think that makes sense. I like also he found a necklace see. for his wife, his strange yellow fruit, I can see quickly as it flips around onto it. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I can't read it enough to discern an actual puzzle. Yeah, and anyone could read it out loud if they want to help out. Here, I'll, I'll do this, this is fun. <clears throat> so for the pay first one, is dated Polita 7 Yitra 232 uh, III, or it's the third. Uh, today. I oh, sorry, a quick quick note. Um, this date format you all recognize. It's the day of the week, followed by the week of the month, and then the month, the year, and the last designation is the age. So this would be, this for example would be Polilia, the seventh week of Yitra, in the year 232 of the Third Age of Light. All right. Today I am at Ridhill, the glorious capital of the Concord of the Coast. The southern heat scours me as I stand in the shadow of my cart, which faces east. Sales have been good so far, and the locals appreciate my fine selection. A righteous man selected a sword from my wares. He said he would take it to the battle with the to do battle with the unrighteous. A more sedate cup sedate customer, a woman Sweet. with a small Good child, night. purchased a ceramic pot to store water and cool her home. She left with a smile, and her boy thanked me himself with a precious, with what precious bravery he could muster. Tonight I will sleep under the stars atop the roof of Samedia, a man I've befriended in the city. He will, he will drink Srimbolum wine <laughs> sing in the night. Cr Crimbo Bloom attacked, wine. Right? Crimbo Bloom. There we go. I can speak. <laughs> 
and it's then, a little so, hard to read. Yeah, whatever. I also can't do this. So the <laughs> uh, second one is dated Ren 3 Yitra 231. So the year before. Still in the third age. Uh, I've made it to the west. Thaura is a marvelous city, and Jack brings my cart to rest facing west in the shallows. My first sail of the day was to a man right about to head to the Haro. He found a fine necklace for his wife at a much cheaper price than he would have there, and saved time as well. A dwarven woman purchased the last basket I had left. She admired the fine craftsmanship of the Muli, and then and the intri- intricate design they are able to create with such simple resources. The taverns and the inns in the town overflow, and I drank, drank nearly until dawn with a group of men on holiday uh, after establishing a mine to the east. I was sick nearly the entire following day, and swear I shall never touch a drink again, lest I die. At least the board is nice. That's <laughs> good. Yeah. That's... So, that was Brimshire, wouldn't it be? You think it might be referring to Brimshire? The, the dates line up with the founding of Brimshire. And then the third dated uh, Goma 2, Eurist 232, again, third age. I arrived in the city of Distani in the lush land of the east, Tiberia. The people here are friendly and peaceful and very interested in my stock from the south. Jack has pulled my cart to the edge of the northern river and so it faces north while I pedal my wares to passers-by on the nearby ground. A hefty orc woman inquired about my strange yellow fruit, a menacing war axe hanging from her left hip. I sold her three bunches after she sampled them. An elven man in simple wrappings, perhaps some kind of monk, inquired about my creature. I was right to speak of the discipline required to train as such a curious and able beast, as he left dreaming of the companionship and hard lesson he might learn with a cage and rest atop his shoulder. A bugbear has offered me simple shelter for tonight. My cart is still crowded. And I have little choice. Okay. So, the last one. Cart is going north. Yeah, so it looks like Thomas, based on the chat, pretty much put things. <laughs> yeah, I didn't move the cage, but I put the strange yellow fruit that none of us have ever seen with the cage. Um, I think it should go to the north, whichever way that should go. And I didn't see the goblet mentioned, but I may have missed it. Maybe the one where they were drinking uh, for Brimshire. They, me- they mentioned a specific wine. They did. And like the others where he just said yeah. I got drunk. But it's not, yeah, it's not a bottle. And everything else was stuff that was sold, not like... You know yeah. things they did so i don't know maybe um are there, there aren't like purchased wine just to remind you too you can't see it here because i couldn't find a model but the merchant's arms are outstretched and his palms are facing upwards uh-huh. oh okay well that helps as if he were like holding things in them so like two items in each direction so then mm-hmm. Why don't we try the try jug and scimitar and, and then turn east? And try to start with whichever page is dated first. Yeah. Like whichever oh. has the earliest date? Yeah. That'd be the second one, right? Pot and the... So yeah, go to the east and the pot and the water. Oh. You want- so Polilia 7 or Ren the 3rd. Well, the Ren the Third is the year before, right? Because it's two thirty one instead of two thirty two. No, the first one is Politia. Polilia. Yeah, I know, but the second page, the date on the second page, isn't the year two thirty one instead of two thirty two? Yes. So that would be the first one. Good call. Chronologically, right? Because we said the pages were out of order. Cause- Hurry up, yeah. the popo are coming. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, that would be first, which is the amulet and basket okay. to the west. Well, so then the pages should go two, one, three, right? Uh, are we sure about that? I don't know what the rest of the dates work. Yes, because Eurist comes after Eurist, right? Eurist. right? So, okay. Yeah. I mean, we would know that. Like, it's pretty trivial, right? I yes. We would know yeah. The, I linked you the calendar so that you would, because you know, 
How yeah, I'm trying to, universe. but it's on my laptop and it's in Steam and it's really small and it sucks. Fair enough. So. Yeah. So you can trust be. your compatriots. Okay, cool. All right, one, so yeah, two, two on three. three. Yeah, two on three. That's right. So we want to try Amulet and Basket. Um, it doesn't. I don't know if the hands matter. Oh, okay. So we can see. Right. Fail of the day about. was to a man right about the head, and then I had a the basket was all I had left. So amulet uh, in the right hand, basket in the left hand. What do you think, dwarf? Sneaky, sneaky Aiden. I mean, sneaky, sneaky syndicate. <laughs> this and looks way see... too intricate to have been designed by the syndicate. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Oh, and then we face him to the west. I'm assuming that's the west. Again, if you if you want to try to have your character sort of reason about this and, and think about it. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Can't hurt, right? <laughs> roll an investigation. Actually, roll intelligence. Just flat yeah. intelligence. God. I'll let you handle that, Wildwin. <laughs> You're so close. Oh, you got it. Ooh, that's a six. Bummer. I should let you do that one. It's it's all pretty cryptic. Um, you're not really sure what the pattern is, or if there's more to it. Maybe if you experiment with it a bit, perhaps a, even a wrong answer, if it indicates that it's wrong in some way, it can point you in the right direction, or you can gain some more insight from it. Yeah. All right. So what happens if we I try? Yeah, so if we put it as we have it with the right and left hands, does it do anything? Does it like react to. So you have the merchant facing the same direction as the cart, right? The merchant is, yeah, he's facing to the west if the cardinal direction, if the cart is facing, if we assume the cart is north of him. It which says which way the cart is in each does paper. It? Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's like, they brought my cart to this place in the west, and so I faced this way. Especially, like, uh, the southern one. Okay. My cart rest, rest facing west. I made it west. to the west. My cart is facing west. So I'm, I'm mean, assuming he would just be facing out of his cart every time, but that seems not correct. Most of them specified a direction. Like when he goes to the Concord of the Course, he's like facing south, but hold on, let me get my note up. Um, the cart faces east and he is in its shadow to the south. Uh, okay, this one says, well, I guess we'll read the top. I have made it to the west. Thalra is a marvelous city and Jack brings my cart to rest facing west in the shallows. My first sale of the day was to a mess. So that's all it is. Just brings my cart to rest facing west in the shallows. Could be something to the right and left as well. This is when you find out the party is dumb. You guys are doing exceptionally well, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really surprised. I'm really happy about I, how well this is going. I really wish I could see the letter. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I feel like that would be a huge help. You can literally come over here. Yeah, let me... See, like, I mean, the... We, we could just try and then see what happens. Like this one says, um, you know, the land from the east, Iberia, people are friendly, peaceful. Right, usually my stock from the south. Yeah, I think you might be right. 
we have to assume the cart's facing west, so he would be facing, be facing. towards the cart. But in this one, um, this in, num in number three, Jack. yeah, Jack has pulled my cart to the edge of the northern river, and so it faces north. Oh. So he would be standing to the south if the cart is facing north. north. Okay. Or actually, I guess not necessarily. He's not. He's not necessarily facing south, but it's 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 on the edge of the northern river, and so so it faces north while I pedal my war where wares to passerbys on the nearby road. So Jack is the head. Jack is the face of wherever it is. Yeah. The merchant is facing, facing a different, different direction. direction. And so, okay, so there is something for. Yeah, there's something. Okay, so there is a direction listed for each item, right? Yeah. Sorry if I'm uh, catching up. Left and banana left for the third page mm -hmm. and creature. Yeah. Right. And then what's the previous one? So first one says, "Southern heat scours me as I stand man. in the shadow of my cart." So he must be standing standing on the. the oh, heat! Southern side. heat scours me as I stand in the shadow. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Which faces east? Left pot. I mean, I guess we have to assume that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west in this place for that, maybe? Yeah. But also, we don't have a time of day, so can't really say. True. Maybe we just have to go with what... Like, which... Because it only says where the cart is in each of these. This is the only one that mentions that he's in the shadow of the cart, or like... Right? Like, all the others, it just says, like, oh, the... Well, there's the other one that says he's, like facing west, even though the cart is in another direction. But that might be the um, only one. Jack has pulled my cart to the edge of the north. Yeah, go to the second one. Yeah. This is the second one, right? This is the third one. This is the second, this is the second one. one. Made um, it to the west. Yeah, so it only says like what direction the cart is facing, but it only sort of... I think if we're trying to figure out where he's standing adjacent to it in each of them, I think that that might be difficult with the rest of them because it doesn't really say that right and then the yeah other i think so, so we can't move the cart i mean we could but really this is the piece that moves so i assume that and i did i'm sorry we noticed that it did lock into a cardinal direction so yeah. i think we would have to try is this what we a case think of is whether west. we simply go for facing him in the direction assuming the cart horse head is pointing north always or we assume that for each puzzle section the forward direction is changing so it kind of rotates on a um, point you see what i mean so I like in the second one oh do you mean the horse might be facing cardinal west you know and then south would be different than if we assumed the horse is facing north right and then i guess the other question related to that is the way the wagon is facing does he mean like the steps of his wagon or does he mean exactly. like the front i would assume it would be the selling side of his wagon is facing mm. west mm. but the way that he describes it in the last one where jack has pulled my car to the edge of the northern river and so it faces north while i pedal my wares to passers by but yeah i don't think he has it like but I, he's the only part that moves, right? So there's a, not really like a way to make Jack face a different direction. So it kind of mm -hmm. have to be him that we're like using, like the little figure so. that we're interpreting. Yeah, it's just a case of like whether we decode the directions based on assuming the horse is north facing or whether we rotate the compass for him. All right, well. Um, I think since the wagon is the only real point of reference and north is the most common point of reference i think trying it that way first assuming yeah, the wagon is north of him and then go from there and then we'll see what happens with the first one yeah we might be wrong i think yeah. it's fair to assume that since the syndicate didn't make this they've been messing with it for a while so yeah and, it's and i didn't detect any explore. traps in here so okay. i don't think it's trapped so do we want to do that put the what is it the this is the necklace in his right hand and the so, yeah. basket in his left. Yeah. Yeah. Facing the west. Yeah. Facing the, the west. And the necklace. So facing that direction. West is assuming the cart is north. 
in his right and that's in his left does anything happen <laughs> all right so you face the merchant to the left the same uh direction as like jack is facing and you place the necklace in which hand in his right hand and the basket in the left and as you do you hear like a faint hum and one of the gems on the cart turns a bright blue whereas before Yay, it was white that's probably good that's good that's cool blue gems don't usually red. do that come on it's a safe Okay, so let's do the, the one from the, the first letter, the Pumita, the sword and the pot. Perfect. So that's so that's to the east with the sword in the right hand and the pot in the left hand. All right. So east, sword in the right hand, pot in the left hand. So in what order are you doing this? Do you rotate them first or do you place the items first? Hmm. Uh, rotate uh, him first. Yeah, I would think take Be very the precise items about out, what you're doing. And then okay. rotate, the and then rotate him, then the sword, then the pot. In. Take items off, rotate. Yeah, place take the items, items off, on. rotate. Right. Okay, so he's facing to the the right if you're looking at the cart. Yes. Correct. Yes. yes. Yep. And he has the pot in his left hand and the sword in his right hand. Yes. yes. Yep. The second gem shatters. Uh oh. Oh shit. No, oh, that's not good. I think you Can might we be pick up the pieces of the gems? Like it's kind of stuck in place. If you sort of touch right. it a bit, you'll see Mending. that it's securely fastened. But Can I mend it? Uh, Wait, before you try that, I think when we reset the puzzle, it might mend itself. It seems pretty magical. Okay, well. If you like, you could it. cast mending on it. I'll like stops me midway. I'll see okay. what happens and then I'll try. Do we think there's a way to reset it? Maybe. I guess maybe if we try a third time. Well, okay. So you could investigate again. You could you could try to think about it more. I will think. And if anyone wants to roll like intelligence, there's a way to see what's happening. To reset this. I'm very smart. Very smart. What is that total? Eighteen. Woo! That might be nineteen. Let me check. I think that's a six. It's a six. <laughs> okay. Um, you think it's probably, like, as you examine the cart and the toy more, it looks relatively unspoiled. Like, someone brought it here and maybe, like, played with the items, but didn't necessarily put them in the merchant's hands or anything like that. Uh, so you think no one has really tried, like perhaps tried this before uh given your success and your failure and reading over the journal again um you sort of notice that he's in each passage he starts by talking about where he is and you think probably the reference to the cart and which way it faces is just to orient him relative to the way the cart is facing. So, for instance, when he reached Minson's Ridheim, he's just in the south. So the cart would be to the south is that what i think and you're means? you're guessing it's pretty straightforward like because it mentions right and left presumably for which hands the items need to go in it may be similar for his orientation that's the most you're gonna you oh. sort of figure out so Do you think maybe there's like maybe we have to rotate him to, wait, go to the second page. Oh, we are on the second page. Oh, it might be, it might just be, I've made it to the West. So rather than what way he's facing, just West. And then for the third page South and for the first page, something else. What he says is the very beginning. 
Okay, so yeah. Oh, yeah, so then south and the other one is east. So south for one, west. And east for the last one. No, sorry, the last one. You do think oh, the that's... orientation of, that, of the cart that's described is important. And east. Okay. Maybe it's the way that you have to turn it. Like if you start to the west, then you have to turn it to the south to get to the south. And then you have to turn it to the east to get to the east. So it is like more a safe combination. So you can think about also, uh, I would review, you think you might want to review <laughs> which worked and what the wording was there. That's and page then, two. That's Both. not the first Both. one. First one was page two. Yeah. There. yeah. Oh yeah, okay. First direction so, mentioned is west. West and west. Yeah, so my card to rest facing west. Mm -hmm. And we had him facing this way, which was west. West. in relation to the cart was left. Yeah. So oh, next one. my first sail of the day was to a man right about to head to the harrow. He is facing to the right in relation to the cart. If you are looking down the steps. Um, no, you're you're going too far. You're traveling too much because right. was left. Is yeah, that's the, that's right. It was yeah. The, Wait, the uh, necklace and the sword. Yeah, you're right. That's ne necklace in the basket. Yeah, kind of fine. Yeah, you're right because that is for the necklace. Yeah. Maybe just try simplifying the directions and go again. Um, also, is the gem still broken? Yes. So the first gem is bright blue. The second gem has cracked. And we didn't try like to reset the puzzle. No. You don't think there is a way to reset it. Why don't we try um, doing What if the we second... just turn it backwards a step again to where it was correct? Try that. It See might what count as like move forward instead but it's only one way to know i guess i think it's worth a shot at least doing the three will uh so yeah does that work for everyone take the jug off put the other stuff back on jug and scimitar yes but what if that counts as the third move and it shatters the third gem that's what i'm saying but we're we be able to get anyway. in yeah if we if we're not able yeah, to get in true. with one shattered gem we wouldn't be able to get in with two i guess that's yeah. true um so yeah, I guess let's take. Sorry, the let, let's time. say the first gem shattered, not the second one. The one that was blue shattered. Oh. Oh, so maybe we have three tries. Three tries to get it wrong. Okay. Okay. So, so move to the we, west. Do we know if we have like failed all of these? We can tell that we've failed all of them, or one is good. You're not sure. You feel like the gem changing blue was good, and the gem shattering was bad. Just a hunch. Just a hunch. That that seems the most straightforward interpretation of those. So signals. the one that worked. Did we use a more like straightforward um, direction from the memo? You can't really see it, so I'm not sure. Yeah, the first time, the first one was, uh, uh, that's the page that's there now. I've made it to the west. Um, Thaur is a marvelous city. Jack brings my cart to the rest facing west. And we set him what we assumed would be west if the cart were cardinal direction north. So he is facing right in relation to the cart. Well. If he was facing this way. Steps, he was facing he was this facing. way. Yeah. We'll say also with your intelligence, like you know that this is the front of the cart, and that you would say the cart is facing this way. Okay. Okay, so that helps a lot. 
So since the cart was I've facing been standing left, for so long. Yeah, you have. <laughs> so he was facing the same. All right, so that helps like so much. The, the next page is the first page or the third page? I forget. Uh, th third page. So it's, yeah, it's two, one, three. Two, okay. So then the, the cart facing east and he is in the shadow. So he's, in, he's facing, he's looking south. Maybe? He, the southern heat scours me. But he's just in the south, right? Like he just means... Does... Well, it did say west and west. So it made it to the west. The card is facing west. And then on this page, it is... Um, now they're in the south, and the card is facing in the south, east. And the card is facing east, which... Oh my gosh, my brain hurts. No. <laughs> Yeah. Holy so that shit. would be. Okay. Oh, he's east, facing north. North. So south he's would be north. facing directly towards the cart, like this. Yeah. But that assumes yeah. that that's correct. Well, we want to give it a shot. I think that makes sense. We can try it. I mean, it can't. Makes sense to me. I'm, I'm yeah, good with it. it so again. we try again with the. Sword in the right hand, left right? hand the pot. Yeah, and pot in the left. Okay. Turn the merchant facing the cart. Place the sword carefully in the right hand and the pot carefully in the left. The second gem lights blue. Yay! Sweet. Okay, good. And then, so the last one mentions east and east, right? Am I correct about that? I say we're in the east and we're Let's facing see. east. Jack has pulled my cart to the edge of the northern river and it faces oh. north while I pass. In the east. Because they're yeah. in Tiberia. So this is, yeah, I arrived in the land of the east. Uh, people here are friendly, very interested in my stock from the south. So I assume, wait, is that not what we just did? Right. That's no. south. That's we're east. On third, we're on the third one. We're on the third one. Yeah, no, right. sorry. Right, so was, if we say... Yeah. So I guess put my cart faces... So the cart faces the north south, on this and one. And he faces east, right? Yes. But then it would be still him looking at the cart. Pass her by right. on the nearby road. So... I would face him south. It would be. Well, I, if, I don't think that we're trying to figure out what direction he personally in each of these situations is facing, right? We're just saying whatever the. Yeah. So the in this one, direction. we're assuming north is this way. So he would be facing that way, directly away from the cart. I'm pretty sure we're figuring out where he is relative to his cart for all three of these positions. No, he's, he's always standing Ooh. right here relative to his cart. Yeah, we can't. It can't be like moved the, from his position. Yeah. It's like just, if you yeah, try to pull up on the merchant, right. you just start lifting the platform. He's secured to yeah. it, but can rotate freely. Yeah. So on the second one, so I guess the first one we did, we chose West because he made it to the West. And the yeah, horse he's was in facing the west. west. So we happened to be the right way. On the first one, we chose South because he was in the South. And that was in relation to the cart facing East. So on the third so one. So we made the cart facing East and him facing South. Yeah. And then the third one, the cart should be facing east and he should be facing... No, the cart should be facing east and he should be facing north, right? So, no, on this one... No. Uh, the what? cart is facing north and he is facing east. Which is, is the correct? same as it is right now. Are you facing west? Yeah. Why are you facing west? You're right. So, so, so let's see. he's looking out from his cart. No, I don't. We haven't been doing it that way, though. We've been doing it just like face him in the direction of the location that's mentioned, not facing faces something. Just north. putting him in the orientation based on where the card is. Yeah. Right? All right. So then, I I guess we would want to take the we other items. Well, yeah. Out. At least okay. for now, let's do that. I guess should, we should like rotate. Or just okay. switch the items. Yeah, but I don't know. We'd rather do it all. Um, are we in consensus on this, though, that the horse is facing north? And that's what if we just did like a, a turn, like a, one, a full turn to the right, right to put him back? Oh, just like 
shoot them like a, like a like a combination lock. You gotta go all the way around. Yeah, I think that exactly. makes sense. Yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. try. Take the stuff and out, do a full uh, sweep, put the stuff back in. Banana on the left and creature on the right. She might sleep still. Are you placing the items there, Chance? Oh yeah, that's right. Banana. Okay. Bones. Yeah, one let's move the gate. So. Yeah, because otherwise the monkey won't work. And you put this on the right. Yep. Yep. The third gem. With a sudden jolt, a piece pops out of the top of the cart, revealing a ring. It's a simple silver ring encrusted with three gems, one of which is cracked. Oh, we broke one. Oh, no. Quick, everybody roll re the reflex save. Poison gas cloud. <laughs> <laughs> it erupts into fireballs. Are the Actually, gems like, lit up at all or anything? They're not lit. Nope. Um, <clears throat> they're That's unlike the any gem you've grenade. seen. Looking at them from the ang your initial angle, like they appear white. If you move your head slightly, they seem to change color through a rainbow of colors, like magenta, green. It's really strange, yet they're perfectly the smooth. Like they're not, not cut. Um, all three are colorful, but one is cracked. And that one actually doesn't appear to change color. Sorry, it's just white, but it's cracked. I could try mending it. I wiggle my fingers. What do you guys think? Do it. Is it worth it? it can't hurt, right? Is magic on it, or is the magic on forever? I don't think mending works on magical items, right? I think it what fixes you the item, do, but not the enchantment. If someone should, whatever, join with the item, find out what it does before you go around putting more magic on right. it. Hey, I mean, that's fair. Um, rolling out magical items here. Uh, I I'll don't know. With it for a little bit. I think I have. <laughs> I have an open slot for tuning to things. I think if no one else does. I mean, give it a little bit of a risk. Yeah, I'll let Nerd have it. Ah, uh, fine. Yeah. Fine, everybody. All right, I'll put it on. All right. Put Do put I on the die ring? immediately? <laughs> put oh, on the no. ring, and you are transported to the abyss. No. Oh, um hey. <laughs> <laughs> No, you put on the ring. Uh, it feels like a ring. It seems large at first as you slide it over your finger, and then it whoosh, sort of shrinks as you slide it over to fit around your hand. You can remove it though freely if you try. It just whoop, comes right off. Yeah. You can put it back on. All right, I will think about this ring. All right. Hmm. We did it. Does it look like there might be any other secret compartments in this? Uh... That's. That's more or less all you find in this house. There's just kind of normal this is like overcooked. house fare. Can we take it with us? Uh, a fancy child's toy taste. like this will be worth quite a bit of money. Yeah, we should definitely take it with us. Yep, yeah. you can take it with you if you like. I want to look at it and figure out how its lock works. <laughs> so learn more about locks. Uh, roll investigation to examine it. Magic. Also, loot everything. Ooh, that's a five. That's it's a horse. confusing and <laughs> intricate. Um, it's the obviously very detailed. Uh, the the pieces, like the bunch of bananas and the jeweled necklace and stuff, are almost like miniaturized versions of themselves. You feel like you could pull the bananas apart if you tried. Um, they appear to be made of like some sort of cloth or something. The jeweled necklace similarly yeah. is actually made of metal. Everything appears like a miniature version of itself. The sword is sharp. You can uh, cut yourself with it if you try. The monkey is not alive. It's like a strange cloth statue, um, but it is in a cage. That is is the merchant a tiny actual person? He's very detailed for like looking at him. You'd swear he's real. 
Does it Ooh, feel like there's any magic or like this was a magically created item to me at all? Roll Arcana. I want the merchant. He is going to be my friend. He's going to be an <laughs> figure. Well, if we're divvying up the parts, I want the monkey. <laughs> Can I have the little jeweled necklace? All these pieces are removable. The merchant, however, remains attached to its base. You could, with some force, potentially break it, you think? Um, what's that total? Flat six. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a Maybe? I don't know. It's pretty crazy. Uh, it's more intricate toy than you've ever seen, certainly. Someone put some, some crafts work into this. Hmm. Well, I guess, well, when you found the fanciest toothpick you could find. Hmm. Do the gems, like, do recognize them as any kind of gem in particular? Or are they just sort of like weird gems like the ones on the ring? Like the ones that are actually on the cart? Sorry, you're asking about the ones that are on the cart? Yeah, do they look like real gems or are they just sort of a... Um... <laughs> They kind of look like maybe just cubic zirconia. They're not quite clear. They're kind of pale. It's a little hard to tell what they are. Hmm. They don't look expensive. They don't look expensive. Okay, I'm not that interested in them. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> still want to take it with me though okay all the pieces like i said are detachable the cage of the monkey the jug <laughs> everything else but the merchant cart and horse seem all attached the rest of the house again just a fairly normal house nothing too crazy well i probably should go Try to rest somewhere and then see if we can get whatever it was you were trying to pick up from the bakery. Might not be worth the risk, but it's up to you guys. Well, I mean, it would be worth the risk in the sense that um, it's like a lot of money. So that might be nice to have, especially since we, I think we've kind of burned that bridge in terms of that contact. I don't think we can really trust him with it anymore. So. Also, we've yeah. never got our food. I'm hungry. Exactly. So, all this talk of baked goods. And we actually had them. We had them. We had them. They're really good too, honestly. In we, terms sent a, of we sent a boy for... out to go get our grub, and he never he never came back in time because y'all went and got kidnapped. Well, we could go see about the food and decide what we want to do. Although the syndicate clearly knows where we're staying, but I feel like that's a fact we can't escape no matter where we go. True. I bet you Rostasia would love to see that toy box whenever we see her again. Yeah, I bet she would too. Maybe she could tell me some more. Yeah, she could probably tell us some more about it. Probably the ring as well. Yeah. And, you know. And all the magical part. I trust her as much as we can. But maybe we shouldn't tell her every magical item we find. That's true. Just, you know, the I was thinking of asking her about the broken gem. Once I learn a little bit more about this ring. So what are we doing? You and I head back to the soft sands. You have already paid yes. for lodging for the night. Okay. <laughs> Does everyone agree? That sounded very hesitant. Yeah, I could get Let's, some food. I was just locked up. Well, you say your baker friend, is he, is he likely to try to split town, you know, with when he knows he's got some angry customers ah, their money back. that is a good point he probably there's a chance he may have cleared out by now but, but maybe we should check that out I first assume. that's I true think. maybe we should just go back there and see if we can At the very least to reclaim our he, he's yeah. working and now we have more people and so yeah. it might be a good place to start too good lead and he's gonna have the yeah. bread and that'll be delicious oh it's really good bread <laughs> and we can question guess. him a little bit yeah, let's check that out first. Yeah, but make sure while you're questioning him, just grab a lot of bread. A, a lot of bread. 
<laughs> I can do the right. questioning. Car can do getting bread from upstairs. <laughs> the glorious sun has fully set and it is approaching uh, midnight, you think. As you approach the Sweet Loaf Bakery, which appears to be closed. There are no lights on inside. There's a sign out front that says closed. Is the door locked? The door is locked. Can I pick the lock? You can try. Do we want to check to see if there's anyone around? Cut up, lost. <laughs> that is a preposterously high number. <laughs> yeah, that's so, a 24. Something like... Is oh, and really technically like... I was supposed to have a... Well, it's oh right. No, you get plus, plus five, five. so modifier. it should be either a so twenty-nine plus, five plus or twelve. More. So yeah, that's a thirty-one, I think. Christ. Yeah, I was thinking it was plus twelve. <laughs> you just within the blink of an eye, the door is unlocked, and you can open it freely. You are on one of the <laughs> Bain-ish streets in the Market District. Uh, near the Platinum Concourse. So we should maybe be sneaky and slip inside quickly? There are a couple people out on the street, and there are, are a few Townsguard walking around. Do they yeah. seem like they noticed me super stealthily pick that lock? <laughs> Roll stealth. Okay. I mean, you did it so quickly, I doubt anybody noticed. Oof, that's a 10. Yeah, you're fine. You don't think anybody noticed. All right, guys, we should probably be kind of quick uh, and just get out of sight as quickly as possible. So if we want to all shuffle on in. Why don't Does everyone guys, go inside? Why don't you guys go down to everything? Yeah. I'll keep an eye out if anybody comes I by. I cast fine traps again. Roll triangle. wisdom. Let's go. Okay. No problem. Nat 20. Um, you don't sense any traps in the vicinity. Everything appears normal. Cool. Okay. All right. Um, Chance, you want to load us up a bakery uh, box and we'll go down <laughs> and resolve this situation? This has been the greatest mission you have ever given me, Wildwin. <laughs> I'm going to grab one as like you know, on our way down. We'll grab a box. No, just a, a bun. Or a bun, or sure. So yes, the as you can see, let's, the uh, Sweet Loaf Bakery is currently uninhabited, uh, other than the mouth-watering sweet rolls, breads, and crackers that adorn all the shelves. Um, everything up front is still stocked and loaded. There's this door to the back. You've unlocked this front door. I just start staring around at everything and taking little nibbles, like. putting them back. <laughs> Cora, take the whole what? thing if you're going to take a bite. I, I don't know if I like them yet. How do you know? You I, just I, keep I, eating. I'm going to let one and set it back. <laughs> Lost! That's... We can't be the bad guys. You can't. That's a felony law. I know. I, I'm just joking. I'll eat it. And I will grab the one I licked and eat it. Just wolf, wolf it down in one bite. Wolf it down. Get it? Uh, <laughs> uh, druid humor. Oh, boy. All right. The, the door to the back room is locked as well. I would also like to pick that lock. All right. Old to lock pick. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, wait, and I have advantage because the gloves. Oh. It's not advantage, right? It's just plus five. Uh, the, what I have written down is... Uh, and there's something else that I don't know what it means. Wait, wrong. say that again when you're speaking. Yeah, you cut out. I heard you. Oh, sorry. Um, what I have plus is five. advantage on... Yeah, I don't know... It's not advantage, it's just plus five. Oh, it's not? Do. Okay, cool. Dex checks well, then this is a... sleight of hand and lock picking. Which is honestly better. So that's advantage. 16. Oh, lock picking, that's what it means. Yes. After a couple seconds, you manage to pick the lock. The door is open if you choose to open it. Yeah, let's go on in. Are we going in sneaky? 
It's sneaky <laughs> music. Can't you hear? <laughs> I think we should maybe be a little sneaky, sneaky. I'm not going in first. If we are going or not going in sneaky, I'll, I'll take the lead. Well, I'll go in first, but I would like someone to be near me so that I'll I don't her. get murdered. Thank you. Uh, okay, I'm going to use my well, inspiration I... on Welgwyn, uh, which will protect her from the next hit. Okay, oh, you're minute. using your divine uh, yeah. channel divinity. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Chance of staying in the of bakery. Of course, well, when I will assist. <laughs> I know the ways of being quiet and stealthy. Thank you. So you head inside. The back room of the bakery, you see the sort of dough kneading tables. There's the big souring trough. Uh, the furnaces, the, the ovens are there as well, and they're just like that ingredients all over the place. Smell. You see the stairs down, and there is a small flicker of light coming from downstairs. And I need to cast Find Traps again to cover this area. Roll Stealth, you two. Uh, are you going in as well, Nerida? I thought I was like trailing behind. Okay, did you want to go into the back room with these with these two? No, if they're sneaking, I'm staying behind with everyone else. Okay. Your fine traps covers basically the entire building. Okay, cool. Well, Gwen is incredibly stealthy. As uh, always. So, Cora, you're about to sort of like bump into uh, a little sack of flour that was left on one of the mixing tables. But I haven't seen much pastry or bread making in the process and all these tools and foods. It's so overwhelming. All right, well, we'll, we'll focus more on the bread aspect later. Um, for now, just eyes forward. You gotta, you know, keep your head on a swivel. Okay. Do I hear any voices? You don't hear roll perception. That's a 23. You listen very carefully. And while you don't hear any voices, um, you do hear like the gentle scribbling of a quill. Okay. Um, is the door going down to the basement loft? There is no door. It's just a stairwell. And there's light, right, a small go. bit of flickering light protruding up from it. Let's go downstairs. All right, well, I will keep eyesight with you, but stay at the top. That way, if we need to alert our companions, it will be easily done. <clears throat> All right, that's perfect. If I do a thumbs up, bring everybody down. Or if I hear screaming and fighting, you know, either well, way. Well, yeah, that too. That too. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if it sounds like I'm dying or if I do a thumbs up. Terrific. Glad we settled that then. <laughs> okay so you sneak on downstairs but as soon as you're here you see Troyax is at the desk by candlelight just kind of scribbling on some paper you're very sneaky though so it takes him a moment before he sees you if you want you could dive at him or I don't know you have a moment to do something before he looks up, because you're very quiet. I'm just gonna get summon as much of my scary, intimidation-y vibes as I can, and I'm just gonna say, hi, Troyax. <gasps> About the mid-range of the staircase. He I wouldn't say his name, just say hi. <laughs> he gasps a bit and looks up. Oh, welcome. I'm... I'm glad to see you're safe. I'm very sorry about what has happened. As I told you before, the, uh -huh. the syndicate showed up just before you arrived. I had no choice. You understand? I know how they can be. I know they can be violent. Um, but I think you owe me a favor. And also, I don't think that we necessarily want to bank with you anymore if you... Uh, can understand my hesitations there. Mm. I do. If if that is your wish. Sure. Um, 
I do not have your entire account on me, of course. It will take a, a bit of time to retrieve. But I do have the what can 500. You give me now? I do have the 500 you ask for. Okay. I'll take that. Do you have anything else that you can give me now to make this worth my time? And uh, any information that you could give me about the Incurve syndicate who approached my you or. To kill you? <laughs> Would be great because I do have a, a a few friends here with me, and you know we have a long standing relationship. Triax, I am already hurt by what's happened between us, and I would hate for there to be any other um, bad blood going on between us. Yes, I, I of course I understand. I am very sorry again. I did not mean to hurt you, and of course, the safety of my customers is of utmost importance. It's, this is all a very unfortunate circumstance. I, I can't, of course, be liable for any other troubles you get yourself into. Uh, I would have warned you, but there was not enough time. I have the 500 here. Sure. I do not keep anything else here for obvious reasons. It will take uh, a bit of time. Perhaps tomorrow we can meet... Perhaps, because of this unfortunateness, if you wish to withdraw your full account now, and I hope you will consider utilizing my services again in the future, if you wish to withdraw your entire account, I understand that because of this unfortunateness, I will meet you in public in a place of your choosing to deliver the rest. You know, actually, Trax, I do think I might take some more money out so maybe we do need to meet up again later, but I have been thinking that maybe there's another way that you can make up for what you've done. Um, I'm going to assume that this is not the first time that the uh, syndicate has contacted you. I cannot speak of my other customers, as you know. You get the sense that he is intentionally giving that away to you as a, a <laughs> sort of payback for what happened. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, do you think you could maybe, of course, not speak of your other customers? I would hate to break the loyalty that you clearly have between you know you and your and your customers. But um, maybe you could just we could meet up every once in a while and chat about local events and uh maybe you could give us a heads up on anything exciting that you think might be happening in the near future you know it's nice to have somebody here in town who has a more of a close ear to the happenings in Thaura since i'm out and about so frequently i think for a small payment that could be arranged What are you thinking in terms of a small payment? Mm. I think 50 gold. And I will make sure that the information is worth it before I bring it to you. Mm. Does that sound fair? Well, to be honest with you, my friends and I have been through a bit of uh, hell today, and I, you did nearly get us killed, so maybe we can make this a 25 gold situation? Roll persuasion. Also, would we be able to hear them talking from all the way up where we are? No. That's a... Ooh, this is a good day for me. <laughs> 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 yes, of course. Um... You are some of my most loyal customers. I, I understand. Here, he sets down on the desk in front of him a large pouch. Here are the 50 loaves you decide. I have taken my standard fare, 5%, from the remainder of your account. Thank you very much. Um, I'll give him, I guess... You, he controls my finances. He can take 25 gold from my finances. 
<laughs> well, he's just told you he took 5% of your withdrawal. Oh, okay, cool. Cool. Um, all right. Well, listen, Troyax, uh, today has been extremely unpleasant. And since I know how difficult the syndicate can be to work with, and I know the kind of vicious behavior that they can, uh, that they can commit, uh, you know, I want to make this water under the bridge between us, obviously, uh, with, you know, this new agreement going forward, but, um, Please do yes. not misunderstand me if this ever happens again. If anything like this ever happens again, if you betray me ever again, I will have to take some more stringent action against you. I understand. I will, of course, attempt to warn you. Uh, do not wish any of my clients to be disrupted or inconvenienced in any way. Thank you. We're going to take a couple extra pastries on the way out. You're the best. Have as many as you like. All right, I'll go back up there. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, it seems like you dealt with that rather reasonably. All things considered. Well, you know, I figured it might be better to have someone here who's a, an ear to the underground rather than a just killing him and taking a bunch of free bread from him. He doesn't even have the rest of my money, so it's kind of be shooting myself in the foot anyway. That's perhaps. Although, given that he betrayed you to the syndicate, I... I don't know. Living in the wilds taught me that if it's someone you can't trust, uh, it could mean your life. Yeah, well, living in the city taught me that you can't really trust anybody, and it's better to have an ear to the ground in terms of folks you can't trust than to be out on your own. All right, well, shall we tell the others? Yeah, I guess we should. Better to have now an I ear get to- to look around when we're not being stealthy and poke into everything, <laughs> kind of climb up onto the sourdough <laughs> or the fat, dough vat and peer in and topple in. Help! Help! I'll help yank her back out of it. It's not <laughs> very <laughs> deep. <laughs> so, you can kind of... There's nothing souring currently, so you just kind of <laughs> fall into this slightly slimy uh, vat of stone, and Walgwyn helps you out. Uh, starter somewhere? Yeah. That is. Wagwin helps you out. You head back out to the main room. The rest of your compatriots are there. Well, and it was crazy, Alik. Like, my my trainer, he just turns himself into a pickle. It's the funniest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> all right, you guys get all your baked goods? Yeah, it took a lot longer. Did you kill him? No, we, we came to an agreement. Take as much stuff as you want from the bakery case. I was already doing Wait. that. That's you good. came to an agreement with the evil banker that double-crossed us. Well, don't he's worry, Alec. She made him understand. Bank. Also, he's not, like, evil, evil. He's got a family. You know, I get it. He has business to run. Orcs like, have a family, too. Yeah, but they're orcs. He's a dragonborn. That's uplifting totally music. Different. Well, we're talking about the guy. Get out of the store that we're not supposed to be in and head back to our uh, hotel and maybe eat something. I'm eating plenty of bread. I don't need to eat anything else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these pastries are quite delicious. I don't think I need to eat anything else for a while and I'll stuff a bunch in my bag. As long as you can promise this won't come back around on us. No, like I it did. I sure hope it won't. Uh, and if it does, he's very worried that we're going to come back here and um, take some different action than we did this time. So, In fact, after all said and done, she paid him 25 gold. You, you paid him gold? It's complicated. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone heads out of the shop into the night. Corey, yeah. You gotta stop blowing up the spot. Yeah. 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 Like, like, she has no idea. No. 
You head back to the soft sands in under the cover of night here in Thalra. Uh, there's, you know, a bit of laughter from taverns as you pass. So a couple of drunks on this street. Everyone is still relatively jovial. Arriving at the soft sands, there is actually no one at the front counter as you arrive quite late. It's now 30 Maybe minutes to midnight or so. Uh, but at the front counter, there is a note that has your room number on it. And behind it, there are satchels of food, it looks like, that may be <laughs> a bit cold at this point. Oh, There's sweet, like they did come. Ham shanks and sweet bread and uh, you know, mixed fried vegetables and things like that. A lot of local goods, corn, wheat. Not wheat, obviously, like uh, grits and stuff like that. It's all kind of cold, unfortunately. Old grits. <laughs> Delicious. Grab a couple <laughs> bags and a ham shank for the road on the way up. Start munching. It's basically all the food you ordered. Yeah. You head on up to your room at the Soft Sands Inn. You guys have two rooms, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. We have two suites, and what's the split? Who's going where? Who's together? Laura, Well, Gwen, Ner Nerida. All the girls? Laura, sure. Well, Gwen, yeah. Girl party. Nerida. All right. We're segregating by gender. At least they still have cleric race, in both apparently. parties this way. God damn it. Why do you always give us the racist? <laughs> <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa! I'm not racist. It's just there's Ali, tieflings I've met in my life. Did you say we are tieflings that you've met, both of us? So when you say that we're doing well, bad things, we're actively no, not doing that. No, 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 no! I'm not. I'm not racist against tieflings. I've got tiefling friends. You guys. <sighs> okay, Leek. All right, I'm just lost. Just. I'm not going to burn him to death. I promise I'm not going to burn him to death. Lost already <laughs> tried. Didn't work. <laughs> if I had it's really tried, it, it, it would have worked. <laughs> Does anyone want to do anything before bed, or are we just going to sleep? And are people staying up to make sure nothing happens? or Y'all want to paint nails? Braid hair? <laughs> I think I can cast another spell. Okay. I'm gonna cast Cordon of Arrows and shoot arrows uh, in front of our room. And if anything that is what meaning to do us harm comes around, it will fire off and alert me. I think is basically what it does. Let's see. Plant four pieces of non. You say plant it in the ground. Just like stick them in the floor. <laughs> We're on the second floor. It falls all the way to the ground. <laughs> Within range, it doesn't and lay magic to protect an area until the spell ends. Whenever a creature other than whenever a creature other than you comes within thirty feet, if a piece of ammunition flies up to strike it, you think this may hit like <laughs> anyone tending to the inn or anyone else. <laughs> Targets. Uh, the spell I'm reading says. Whenever a creature other than you, do you have a different source? Let me. I can get the actual player's hand. Too. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. I just find it. So it is. Warden arrows. It's a cool spell. Yeah. yeah it's something it's I don't cool need to guy. concentrate on. That's correct. So, it's just like a trap you set. Yeah, so it was like, well, what can I do? Because I don't want to have a whole bunch of those things counteracting each For other. sure. Okay, here's the official handbook. Till the spell ends, whenever a creature other than you comes within 30 feet of the ammunition for the first time on a turn or ends its turn there, one piece of ammunition flies up to strike it. You can designate any creatures you choose and the spell ignores them. So you could designate like your party but then if like another guest comes up, the arrow will fly and hit them. <laughs> yeah, so any, yeah, I guess it's not. Okay. You can't say like a creature that intends us harm because you just can't know that, unfortunately. 
But the arrows can't. No, the arrows uh, can't. I guess, what, IFF. if I put them inside <laughs> the rooms and I say, hey, uh, attack anyone who's not our party. That's true. You could do that. Okay. You want all, let's see, how many are there? Uh, four. So do you want two in each room or just all, all right. four in your room? Only the girls get protection. <laughs> No, I'll, I'll come into the boys' room, like still in all my cloak while they're changing. Everyone's painting one nails in the corner, and braiding one in hair. The other corner. <laughs> well, Chance and I are at least we, we're we're angry at, at we're shunning uh, Alik the racist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I okay. can't do that. That's just look, gonna further I just kind of disbelief. <laughs> dig into the floor with my knife. I kind of make a little hole. And put, put a, is you can put you can put them in like a table. The floors are like stone. Um, they appear to be like sandstone. It's amazing they've. So they've I just make eye contact. I walk over the ta uh, table while they're painting their nails and just like slam an arrow. In. <laughs> <laughs> and then go the other side of the room and do it again. <laughs> and then kind of cock my head and walk away. Okay. So you've cast Cordon of Arrows. How long does that last? Is it eight hours? I don't know. Sure. Uh, yeah, eight hours. You're good. Okay. Cool. And I'll I'll let you plant them in different places, even though I think you're supposed to put them all in the same place. But it's fine. Oh. All right. Both it's in the same corner. No, it's totally fine. I won't make you uh, cast it twice. Okay, well, I don't know. Anyway, uh, cool. All right, everyone else is just going to sleep. Are we doing watches? Sorry, I was a little distracted. Set up arrows. No. <clears throat> I can't really core... wake up the boys. <laughs> but... set up arrows that will attack anyone who enters the room. And will those like wake us up and alert us? It'll alert me. And then Somebody I'll getting hurt off. probably will. Yeah, some, someone may yell or deflect it yeah. or something. But still, I mean, it, I don't know. We could all just go to sleep, but it might be nice to have at least one of us in armor if we all get attacked. Depending on oh, who's I'm on not, watch. Oh, I'm not getting oh, no. undressed. <laughs> I'm yeah. just doing my nails, I mean, you know, bitch. Sorry to ask a technical question, but if we don't get undressed, we take a point of exhaustion the next day, right? Yeah, you can't comfortably sleep in your armor. I would say if it's light armor, you may not. You may be okay. But um, yeah, you can't comfortably sleep in plate or chain or anything like that. It'll be hot and awkward. I suppose I will also sleep in my gear since the arrows will alert me. <laughs> yeah, it'll be like that if you try to sleep in your plate. I cast Death Ward on Nerida, on myself, and I don't know, Chance. Nice. <laughs> it lasts Thank eight you. hours and it's not concentration. What? That's pretty good. Yeah. All right, well, uh, we'll just go to roll, bed then, I guess. Alec, roll wisdom to make sure you can cast it and reach out to Oh, uh, yeah, that still happens, huh? Do I need to do it well, three times? Uh, how many Nine? times are you casting it? Three times. Three times. Yeah, yeah do it for each time. Nine right, will so work. That was Nine works? Yep. Okay, so that was Narada. This is me. That's good. That's better than a nine. And then this you is, feel uh, like it's it's you're yeah, just chance. barely Oop. getting chance. It For does chance. not work on chance. You're gonna you die. Cannot reach out to your, to Helm. You feel the connection <clears throat> is just too tenuous, and you you're tired. Don't, you can't concentrate on the spell. Don't worry too much, Chance. If you die, Narada and I can resurrect you, and not That's just true. as a zombie. I didn't even consider that last part. Yeah, it like it brings back your soul, and I stop and I turn in air, and I'm like, they have souls, right? Oh yes. <laughs> my god! <laughs> Ellie, fuck you! Yeah, so and fuck you again! <laughs> Not only did you just cast a spell on me, but then you went and told Chance how you would resurrect him. I'm I'm hurt. Oh, I had resurrected you too. 
I'm just saying. Oh, yeah, it, yeah. You know, if he dies. Yeah. yeah, but you had to tell him special. <sighs> yeah, because I on failed fire. to I'm protect him. Light him on fire. <laughs> you didn't even try to protect me. I, I, All right. Everyone is going to bed for the night. <laughs> That's where we'll take our 10 minute break. We'll come back at 5.51. 10 minute break, everybody. Be right back. And we're back. So, um, the night passes without incident. None of the arrows seem to go off, seem to be triggered by anything. Not so sure this is mysterious music, but okay. Um, and everything seems fine. Wake up in the morning, the death ward fades, and the cordon of arrows also fades. It's when death ward fades, you all die. Everyone is the only <laughs> thing keeping you alive. That's its name. I um, want to get up really quickly uh, before a leak gets up and put as many rocks and pebbles as I can find in the room inside of his boots. Nice. <laughs> there are no rocks or pebbles in the room? Anything <laughs> that would cause his feet to be uncomfortable that I can collect quietly. Okay. Your moldy the cheese. Pocket, the pocket. Yeah cheese in his shoes <laughs> we don't need to make that worse loss <laughs> are you putting the pocket cheese in you could also you have like silverware from when you ate food oh yeah well i mean putting a whole fork in a boot isn't that funny <laughs> but putting a lot of cheese is <laughs> yeah putting moldy of cheese is funny kind of is to me. a bunch of moldy cheese it smells quite bad uh <laughs> Your moldy cheese. Put it in your boots. <laughs> All right. Send them to the moon. <laughs> what? Okay. We're yeah. <clears throat> Everyone's awake. Ali, notice the moldy cheese and roll boots? perception. It's not going to be too hard I, to smell it. I have pretty high passive perception. <laughs> it's like fifteen. <laughs> that's uh. Your 15? boots smell. No, that's like nineteen. Horrendous. <laughs> and they smell very different from your feet. <laughs> and you, you look inside. Than <laughs> <laughs> and there's gloopy green weird crumbs of stuff. Oh. Did you guys put oh no, you know, the end must have put some air fresheners in my boots and I just bang them out right onto the floor. <laughs> Splats on the floor smells horrible the smell starts filling the whole room just of rot <sighs> nothing like good old pocket cheese in the morning i don't vomit these air fresheners are horrible i don't know what they were thinking even though you banged it out there's kind of a you like put your hand in your boots and there's a bit of slime residual slime inside um does the slime like moisturize? Because that's great. Oh, God. It moisturizes, slime. but you think uh, you could potentially get a fungus from wearing those boots. Hey, Chance, you have fire. Can you purge the fungus from my boots? Uh, no, dude. I'm pretty sure that gives you additional acid damage. <laughs> <laughs> When you kick people? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you know, it's like that big lizard thing that uh, uh, Lost turns into occasionally. Bites a bunch of nasty yes. things and then makes his venom more dangerous. <laughs> is that is that one of the things I do? You, you know, can... I'm going to guess that a, a giant iguana and a monitor lizard, for some reason, Very share similar. some anatomy. <laughs> oh, you know what? I do have a smith's kit. Let's just uh, heat something up real quick and then... Uh... You can't use it to cauterize. heat anything with your smith's kit. You don't have like Can a I forge. Can I heat things with radiant fire? Uh, it's not heat, per se. Yeah, also the only thing that I could do with magic on that, I think would possibly destroy your boots. I think you might have already done that. I mean, I think the cleaning <laughs> might have already done that. 
You could do it carefully. You could like uh, conjure flame or something. And... Oh, bonfire. Lost. Can you make a very tiny, precise bonfire in my boots? In your boots. Yeah. Or, you know what? Heat this metal rod up and I'll cauterize the inside of my boots. You could do that. Um, is there... What what is the makeup of our room? I mean the stone it, it is stone appears, the stone floors. The walls and floors appear to be sandstone while the roof appears to be wood. Okay. And how much room is there anywhere? Ten feet, and there are windows you could open if you like. <laughs> Do you have uh, to conjure it on a surface or can you conjure it and then in the air? No, it has Believe to be on the ground. It has to be on a surface. Ah. And it's always a five-foot cube, so oh, uh, like ha half of this room will be in engulfed, <laughs> or a quarter of this room will be engulfed in flames. So it'll be big. There's definitely enough clear space, but it'll be <laughs> close-ish to where the beds are with their canopies. It do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. <laughs> Okay. So, okay. So yeah. Sure. Okay. We're leaving after this, right? <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna trash the room and go. Oh, Light the whole building on fire real fast. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's what I did last time we were in town. Um, <laughs> exploded sure, I, it actually. I, I exploded a building. Uh, yes, I will cast create bonfire. All right. For Ellie to purge if I, the, the smell of from his shoes. If I cast protection from energy on my boots, can I just throw them in there? Protection I mean, from energy? Yeah. This is a lot of spells we're using. Luckily, mine's a cantrip, to, so I don't really care. Yeah. But, is there like, like a sink somewhere they could like rinse? You you think you could spend a little out? bit of time with like soap and a brush to clean your boots? Oh, I'll just do this that. This is then. a dwarf. This is a dwarfy okay. solution, right? Right. I mean, um, I've already I've already created the fire, out, right, Ellie. Just, so we'll use roaring magical right. bonfire in the middle of the I'm room. Just, you I'm have heating like up the thing. You heat up the crusher, oh. the crushinator, and yeah, jam sure, it in there. Rub it around. You know put some bristles on it or something yeah protection from energy has to be on a creature so you can't cast it on your boots but yeah you can <laughs> you can <laughs> I think my, objectively there are creatures on my boots uh, is mold a creature i don't know maybe um you and you don't want to protect the mold no i know it's true <laughs> <laughs> yeah so you heat the crusher and sort of like smash around your boots the smell is is just awful you're just like burning <clears throat> rot it's like sour manure just fills the room and there's like a faint smoke just wafting over the whole room soaking into the bed soaking into the walls as much as it can in the ceiling it just smells like a hundred cows took a huge dump all together in this room Big. I uh, apologize <laughs> for this one. I'm realizing now this really got out of hand <laughs> than I thought it would. Eh, I smelled worse. All right, I'll clean. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, You're ready I'm, going, to I'm going to, uh, yeah, I'm going to put the bonfire out or stop concentrating on it. Okay. Across the hall, you ladies, you, you start smelling something sour and rotten. <laughs> Oh, the boys must be awake again. We literally can never put them all in a room together again, you guys. This is what's going to happen every single time. They need one of us to be there. <laughs> oh, but it was fun having a girl's I've night. I've smelled worse. I could finally Not sleep in the nude. Yeah, I wish you hadn't, but um, I'm glad that you feel comfortable around us. But maybe we can get you some nice pajamas. Uh, when we're out and about in town today. <laughs> oh, I've never had nice clothes. It's always just my cloak on the road. <clears throat> Did you not go shopping with us before? Did we? I, I don't feel think like we so. Mostly went, um, we went shopping, but I feel like we mostly went weapon shopping. Because <laughs> there was that like, cute... There was that, well, like, sounds like we'll have to go dress shopping <laughs> before our journey is done. I could actually also go for yeah. a new pair of pajamas if we're being Didn't totally get, honest. So you guys got nice clothes before the party. Yeah, we, we had did. In, what's it called? Brimhold? Brimshire? Brimshire, yeah. 
But that was a while ago, so I understand why you may have forgotten. Oh, I, just, I, I didn't enjoy the dress while it was a pretty clothes, and this is pajamas. Much different. Pajamas are the best. We'll get you hooked up. Pajamas. Get you a nice fluffy robe. Already learning the fun language to use. Pajamas. <laughs> well, Gwen is the most, like, athleisure wear person I've ever met. I'm wearing joggers right now. Uh... <laughs> Wise choice. <laughs> Did we go see what exact kind of nonsense the boys have gotten up to? No, I think we should leave them to handle it on their own. <laughs> we should just leave. Kick open the door. Oh my god, you would not believe what I did. <laughs> oh, Chan. The smell. What There's like subtle smoke. Time? Pouring out of the room. Well, as usual, Alik was being racist, and uh, I tried to prank him, but he is unprankable. So I put pocket <laughs> cheese in his shoes, so it was pocket shoes cheese. And he heated it. Well, lost heated it. Uh, and now it's death gas. Why did you do any of that? Why did any of you do any of that? Because he was being racist. I don't think when people just... When they just talk about tieflings and like how they generalize, it hurts inside. And I don't think clearly. Well, we probably won't be allowed to spend the night here again. <laughs> you mean like you all have tails? I don't quite. No, how so. That one's, that's... Like we'd want to spend the night again. Their shoe cleaning service is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ellie. Uh, while Chance barged in, could you all leave the room right now? Oh, oh God. <laughs> We're gonna fix it later today! So everyone gets up and gets dressed, I assume. <laughs> <laughs> you leave your room smelling as it does. One of the most horrendous smells you've ever smelled. And At least we way. now have a uh, potent weapon against enemies if we need it. <laughs> Setting yeah, Alex's shoes on fire. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> throw some uh -huh. fungus in the shoes. I'll remember that. Mold for Fondue a little bit shoes. And then throw it on fire. I told you pocket cheese would save us one day. <laughs> you do it say that. Happened a lot. Yet, so. Yeah, but I mean, we got to keep trying pocket cheese. <laughs> <laughs> you just got to try it till it works. 20% of the time, it works 100% of the time. <laughs> All right. What's everybody doing? You go outside. It's the beginning of the day. People are setting up shop. Um, people are headed off like their carts headed towards the Platinum Concourse or to the Haros. Can we pick up um, our Silver Blade? Yeah. Documentation. Medallions <laughs> or whatever it was we were promised. <laughs> And hey, can Nerd she identify the ring while we're there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Do I know Should've, about the ring yeah. now that I've, like, slipped on it? Let's see. Or am I dead now? You're dead. <laughs> In the middle of the night. It's a ring of wishing. No, she had death wars. comes to you and rips your soul. <laughs> it's true. Hooray. Uh, <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> I don't... I think <laughs> I don't think this requires attunement. No, it doesn't. So I just don't know anything about it. You just don't know shit. What it is? Well, we could go maybe ask Teluria to find out what it is. We could show her the thing that it came in. Maybe she'll know. Yeah. You can focus on it during a short rest while being in physical contact with it. Oh, okay. Is that not what I did? <laughs> At some point. So yeah, you can do that. You focused on it while you were in bed with it. You know what? You focus on it, but its nature eludes you.
<clears throat> as you focus on it, though, and sort of like try to manipulate it or say magic words, whatever it might be, um, you get the sense that it's extremely powerful. Good powerful or evil powerful? Extremely powerful. Okay. You yeah, don't get a sense of alignment. Is it's very distressing. Alright, well, yeah, um, I suggest we go um, either talk to Teluria or whoever she was sending us to to be constricted into the blades and then Did try you? to negotiate a lower deal on that crystal ball. <laughs> uh, I think you misunderstood. She's just going to give us a writ. We're not going to be conscripted. Well, we're, we're, we're becoming members of the Silver Blade, so I assume that means we have actual tasks so we're or something's required of us. Still, I, I don't want to join the advisor. military. You said she would make you honorary you silver blades. I think we're more like yeah. So we could do tasks for her, right? Not, uh... Uh, it grants you a considerable amount of authority that she sort of told you about. Um, you can basically... Like notify people that you are members of the Silver Blades and they'll regard you as such. And it may afford you things like free food and lodging, or you know, you may even be able to convince people to give you items or take orders from you. Okay, so it's just like in lieu of payment, we get this like VIP card. Yes. Basically. You you think that you there may also be obligations. You already have a writ of magic from okay. um, from the Spellcasters Authority. Uh, which is not necessarily like not necessarily the case that all silver blades are permitted to use magic, but you have a writ that uh, okay. allows you. Well, uh, should we go pick those up then? Probably be a good thing to have. Let's do it. So go back to the Vetus Arcanum and yeah. look for two. Yeah. Okay, so it takes probably, you know, 30 minutes or so to get there. It's a large town, and you're staying at the Soft Sands, which is several miles away. Uh, and you arrive, it's sort of mid-morning, uh, and go up to Teluria's office, and the door is open. She is inside. Hello. Uh, hello, Talora. Oh, hello. Yes. Um, um, we're here. To... I was we're expecting. We're going to pick up the uh, silver blade uh, passes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've just finished laminating them. Here they are. <laughs> <laughs> She gives them to us on little lanyards. We hang yeah, them. who's here? You can flash this at the door and they'll let you right in. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure to swipe them on the electronic lock. So... <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes. Uh, Visor Addison uh, is waiting over at the Silver Strand. It's just across the Platinum Concourse from here, um, if you're not familiar with it. It is the sort of headquarters of the Silver Blades. Uh... The induction ceremony will take place there. You can go, uh, you may have to wait a bit. I'm not sure if they're ready for you right now, but they know to expect you today. Teluria, I don't, how long has Visor Addison been helping out the war front here? The war? Uh, we're not necessarily at war yet, and I don't know that he's been involved in the war effort, if there is one. Excuse me, the, uh, the, conscript, the conscription of, like, the Silver Blades. How, how long has he been involved with the Silver Blades? Um, it's not really Addison. Uh, it's more... Um, Visor Del Antimos. Uh, he's in charge of, like, civic law, so he has authority over that as well. But those two work together often. I see them together quite a bit. You've known them for a while? You've... 
I don't interact with Addison much. Uh, Dylan Timos works with us occasionally because I'm head of the Spellcaster's Authority and he's in charge of civic law, so we work on enforcement together from time to time. Okay. Well, thank you for that. We'll get on these tasks. Yeah, no problem. I'll get back to my work then. She's just, like scribbling on some paper examining reports and things like that so you are here at the vitas did, did, did we ask about the crystal ball first I, I was i missed that point Ooh. um teluria doesn't have one but we were gonna get proof that we're slumber blades and then try to renegotiate with the store owner That's to get right. the one that was there <laughs> <laughs> Gotta whine a lot to them. Yeah, it's just like this. <laughs> <laughs> but I want the crystal ball. Can't have it. So yeah, you're on the north side of the platinum concourse, like the northwest side, and the silver strand building is on the east side, just past the uh the what is it, Platinum Palace? Yeah. So you head on over to the Silver Strand, I assume? Yeah. Sure. Sounds okay. good. <laughs> it's a fairly large building, uh, almost as large as the Vetus, and looks considerably older as the Vetus is sort of being just built and renewed. Um, the Vita seems much newer constructions. This building is much more ornate. There are sort of statues of uh, different characters who may be important within the Silver Blades, sort of elves holding sword, all holding swords and shields um, that point upwards. And then over the door, there is the symbol of the Silver Blades, which is a clasped hand with a small blade protruding from it. Heading inside. Oh, you want to wait outside? No, I just gotta lean over to Welgwyn. Kinda looks like a dick. Isn't that about everything? I mean, there's a lot of stuff that kinda looks like dicks. Don't say that to anybody inside. They're not gonna like it. What do Heading you mean inside? It looks like a dick? I don't understand the reference. <laughs> Stop saying the stuff in front of her. <laughs> we asked so many follow-up questions. <laughs> Heading inside, um, there is a man to greet you. He's just sort of a human man with short brown hair. Ice, yes, hello. Can I help you? Do you have an appointment today? Yes. We were told by Miss Delphi to see... I don't remember his name. By Zer Addison. Zer Addison. That's what I said. Okay. Uh, yes. Um, I think we've been expecting you. Uh, Visor Addison and uh, Visor Delantimos are, are not quite here yet. They will be in an hour, so if you wish to wait in the lobby, we'll expect them then. So, this is a fancy place you got here. Have any... Any any of those pastries or uh, tea to keep us while we're waiting? I'm sure something could be arranged from the mess. Do you wish for yeah. food? Uh, I could show you to the mess hall. You could eat breakfast with some of the trainees. Don't what mind. What do you guys think? You're not going to want that, Cora. I think we already <laughs> had breakfast, I assume, right? No. Alright, yeah, oh, because they don't have food. Yeah, let's have some breakfast. We got an hour. Not gonna want yeah, this, guys. Okay. It's gonna be gruel. Maybe they feed their uh, their soldiers well here. They did take that uh, that poor cook to come cook for them, so maybe they're prioritizing it. Making meals. Oh, uh, what for was a his name? People. Can we ask I... him if the cook is here? Thurmond. 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 Let's go you see know, him. Our buddy Thurmond seemed to have joined the 
Silver Blades. He, I think, was fairly newly conscripted. He might be with the trainees. Perhaps you would know him? I can't say that I've heard of a Thurmond, sorry. I'm not that familiar with the trainees. Bummer. You have, like, different colored skin? I don't, like, or something? He was very identifiable. He was a dwarf. Oh, she has no. Oh. <laughs> You're thinking of the, uh, the, the silver, or the blacksmith guy. Yeah, wow, right. Chance. Right. I cannot <laughs> believe that you would be that racist. <laughs> My well, non tieflings just look the same, am I right? I, believe I just mixed two different complete... I don't even know what. <laughs> yeah, because we all look the same, right? Mm, heard it before. I swear to God. Swear <laughs> to whatever is powerful than yours. Oh, man. So after being trolled by Alik... <laughs> um, <laughs> this man uh, sort of guides you back... To the back of the building and out back, there is sort of a large outdoor training area where you see people like firing bows or sparring. And there are a number of picnic benches and tables. And there's a, uh, against the wall, there are people cooking, a few chefs just cooking basic food. And then there's a long sort of buffet line table where trainees seem to be coming up and like getting dishes and piling things onto their plate it's pretty basic fare for the most part it's like fried meats there's maybe some bacon eggs and stuff like that for breakfast grits again uh and like grits. cornmeal yeah pretty basic stuff chopped carrots fried vegetables no ham shanks no ham they shanks fried meat yeah Feel free to help yourself. You are guests here at the Silver Strand. And Damn. I will come and find you when Addison and Delantimos are here, if you remain in the courtyard. Thank you. What was your name? I'm Jeremy. Jeremy. Thank you very much. All right. I'll be off. Enjoy your meal. Oh, the meal's pretty myself. good. <clears throat> uh, yeah, pretty good pretty Decide good that it's not necessarily completely to my liking and take a pastry out of my bag <laughs> it's not like fancy tavern food pastry, um, but it's certainly serviceable all of the trainees none of them seem put off at all that you're there uh, a couple of them give lost and chance kind of sour looks but mostly turn back to their meals and don't bother you too much most of the trainees are human or a few uh... Few by the silver blade, boys. Uh, we just started. Pretty fresh. Oh yeah, have they shown you where the armory is? Um, no. We haven't gotten our official equipment yet. No, oh, well that's too bad. Let me go back to my pastry. <laughs> <laughs> You'll do fine, lads. And if you see Roy Parthus, let him know that he, I think he's a big baby. We'll do that. I don't know Roy, but I'll keep an eye out for him. He's usually got like stupid mountain stuff on his face. Yeah, you might see if there's a battle and you right. see someone running, it might be Roy. I believe uh, that he has a very he's a big coward. Pole. No, no, he's not a coward. But he's he does brave. indeed have a big hole. <laughs> they all sort of look around at each other and just bust out laughing. <laughs> Biggest oh, hole I've ever oh, seen. I, oh, I know what I said. All right then, boys. <laughs> I assume you enjoy your meal and sort of wait out the hour. Yeah. Some of us enjoy it. I want to welcome Welwyn, well, would you come looking with me? Perhaps we can find something to uh, acquire to help us with our adventures. Maybe like, we shouldn't steal from our I friends think, immediately? I think if we ask them for equipment, they'll probably just give it to us. Not that I don't love uh, stealing, I just don't necessarily love 
That's still the wrong word. Borrowing. I don't necessarily love borrowing in a uh, massive building full of people who are armed. Hmm. Perhaps. However, <clears throat> uh, the scent of new money always makes me think that there's uh, things to be found. There probably is, but I mean, this is just like a military base, basically, right? Yeah, you actually get the sense that all the trainees out here, none of them are new silver blades. They're all basically just like training for the military. Yeah. You get the sense that um, being a silver blade is like a pretty particular position. We're like at the Silver Blade headquarters. Yeah, like it doubles the seniors as... showing up to the freshman area. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So who are we hazing? No. <laughs> <laughs> After about an hour or so, uh, uh, as approaches noon, unless you guys want to do anything else, you can try to do something else during that time. No. Okay. Uh -huh. Apparently, I've been poo pooed, so. <laughs> Visor, uh, Delantimos, shortly trailed by Visor Addison, come out of the door. You exited out into the open and look around for a bit until they find you and walk over. Ah, yes. You are here to be inducted into the Silver Blades. I'm sorry that. You arrived earlier than we did, but we are here now, and we can go perform the induction ceremony, if you wish. This is the one that looks exactly like Visor Dalen? Hey, yeah. No. Oh. Oh, that's the other guy. Is he here There's, too, or no? Uh, yes. Visor but Addison not, looks and sounds exactly like okay. Visor Dalen from the Ever War. But he's not here right now. He is here. He's short. He's oh. just behind Delantimos. Hello, Visor. I'm sorry, I don't remember your name. And Visor Dalen, I say to Ad, Adam Timos, whatever his <laughs> name is. And then I want to inside check Adamson and Dylan Tinos. So, Adamson. Okay. <laughs> Addison. I think it was an intentional check. It's in the chat. Well. And Dylan Timos. Yeah, so it's an intentional calling him Visor Dalen. Okay. Oh, that's my insight role. It's not great. Me too, me too. <laughs> well, someone wrote for me. I got gotcha. you. It is Give a nine still. Advanced. Oh. Uh, ten plus. What's your insight, Nerida? The max it can be, whatever that is now. <laughs> it's it what? be plus nine, right? Plus nine, yeah. So nineteen. Yeah. Unless my ring does anything cool. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't do anything cool immediately. <laughs> That you notice. Okay. <laughs> uh, I, I think you have my name wrong. Dwarf. Uh, Ali was it? My name is Visor Addison. Oh, it I'm is sorry, a that's difficult to remember. I understand. Your friend is Visor Dalen. I don't know a Visor Dalen. I believe, in oh. fact, uh, was it Logarius's friend? Logarius the first. He looks to Delantimos. Uh, that sounds correct to me. Oh, Delantimos. Uh, that I must be confused. You know, I don't know your history very well. I'm sorry. I did. I did get a briefing before I left. Uh, you know, the mountains of my home. But uh, yeah. yes, no, I am Visor Delantimos. Just to remind you, and this is my friend and close associate, Visor, Visor Addison. Yes, I will be conducting no the ritual to our tonight. Racist dwarf. He has problem with people. <laughs> racist. Well, so they they say I'm racist. I I have difficulty. I grew up around dwarves, you know, so I have difficulty telling humans apart and remembering the names. It's it's pretty common among you know well, dwarves. Uh, I do apologize. I don't it's it's all right as as long as you them, but... as long as you behave yourself in our lands, we'll be okay. Remember, you'll be representing the Silver Blades soon, so we yes, expect quite we've, a bit from you. We've done a fair job in in uh, helping advance and protect the people of Thaura. Um, you know, innocents all over the world, but most recently Thaura. 
Yes, I've heard. Indeed. The folks we at Brimshire. We were at the wall when it was breached. The, the folks at Brimshire speak quite highly of you. Would you like me to sing you one of our many victory songs? Oh no, that's all right. Uh, we may not. Thank perhaps, you. We may have time for that later. <laughs> I've got the Derringer halfway out. The one Derringer. Favorite, uh, <laughs> Jesus. The Pull a gun on <laughs> Did you redo? So you redo halfway out. It's a highly anachronistic gun. Out of my uh, face! I pulled a Tommy gun. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna shoot. And I filled him full of holes. See. <laughs> We've got, we've got the didgeridoo like telescoped out ready to go that's that's quite all right that will not be necessary for the induction ceremony it's a very simple ceremony i don't have time to practice but we'll i'll walk you through it so don't worry and we'll get everyone inducted today if you would follow me is there anybody else gonna be joining us other than just everybody here right now any more silver blade inductees? I don't see a no. I don't see a reason to. We aren't inducting any other silver blades today. It is just you. Hmm. So, if you'd follow me, yeah, let's do it. They lead you inside to a small room with a clean white cushion in the middle of the floor. It's good. Hopefully, this is actually mysterious music. Uh, Visor Delantimos holds his hands out wide. Welcome to the Chamber of Gilding. Addison sort of like looks exasperated. He does love dramatics. <laughs> Shakes his head a bit. Please kneel upon the gilding cushion. And he gestures to Cora. I'm gonna whisper to Wilwyn, I'm terrified right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but your manner is just very much intimidating. Perhaps Alik would like to go first. Um, very well. Alik, would you kneel? Ah, yes. I'll be much braver than Roy ever was. Um, Cora, and I kneel. I'm still terrified. <laughs> As you take your place on the cushion, he places <laughs> a sizable, a <laughs> a sizable candle before you. He wraps his long, sinewy fingers around the candle and chance. As the silver moon reflects the glorious sun, you shall reflect the glory of our covenant. A flame springs to life on the wick of the candle. Visor Delantimos places a silver sphere into your hands that he draws from his robe. Gazing into it, you see a perfect reflection of yourself as though you were looking into a flat mirror. This is the sphere of truth. It reflects who you are, both to yourself and to us who witness your induction. Please repeat after me. I pledge myself to the people of Lothuria. I pledge myself to the people of Lothuria. I thought a leak was on the page. Yeah, it's just me, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, wow. never mind that. <laughs> Wait or your turn. I... <laughs> One yeah, inductee pledge... at a time. I pledge to uphold the beliefs of Helm and help the people of Lothuria in any way that I may. Um, excuse me. The induction ritual is very specific. Just follow me. Let's try again. I pledge myself to the people of Lothuria. This is a bit awkward because I don't believe I can make that, that pledge. I will do my best to help the people of Lothuria, but... That's more or less the, the gist of the pledge. Um, <laughs> well, there there may come a time where I may not be able to help the people of Lothuria if a situation calls for helping, say... Me he glances me. over to you know, Addison. Another helpless person. Just is sort of like, what are they doing? Um, that's perfectly all right. Uh, yeah, Ali, just say the words, okay? Come on. <laughs> well, if the words aren't important, why do I need to say the words? Don't say the words. Just the words just... are important, but it's not quite that specific. It's basically yeah. just you'll help the people of Lothuria as much as you can. You don't yeah, have to I devote help your the entire of life. Lothuria no, here are the words. Repeat after me. <laughs> 
Say the words, Ellie. I oh, pledge God. myself to the people of Lothuria. You can interpret that virtually however you wish. <laughs> I pledge myself to the people of Lothuria. <laughs> to safeguard them against all threats. Can I interpret this however I wish? <laughs> it's pretty straightforward. I don't know that anyone has ever had trouble with the pledge. To interpret all innocent people. Against, to safeguard them against all threats. To safeguard sure. all innocent people against all threats. Oh, you've expanded it beyond Lothuria. <laughs> Just, I pledge myself to the... Let's start over. Uh, he's getting... Like, even though he's like very jovial and smiley, you sense he's cracking a little bit. <laughs> let's try again. I pledge myself to the people of Lothuria. I pledge myself to the people of Lotharia. To safeguard them against all threats. To safeguard all of the innocent people of Lotharia. All right. Would someone threats. else like to try? Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Can... Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll. Let's just do this. I'll get this over with. Okay. Please Careful. kneel upon the cushion <clears throat> of gilding. You got oh, it. lost. Your need for a home is showing again. You will join any cult or uh, grouping. Sure. This is okay, hardly let's, a, let's just a do this. cult, Cora. This is D just very ignore serious. them. I ignore the, the rest of them. I, I have no idea what's going on right now, but I, I'm I'm down with what's happening. Let's just do this. All right. Whisper to Welgwyn, I'm Spike of an enemy. All right, we just say the words and then... Kneel on the pillow. It's he fine. takes the sphere from uh, Alec and hands it to you, Lost. This is the sphere of truth. It reflects who you are, both to yourself yeah, yeah, we heard and it already. to us who witness your induction. Please repeat after me. I pledge myself to the people of Lothuria. I pledge myself to the people of Lothuria. To safeguard them against all threats to safeguard them against all threats and serve them in times of peace and war and serve them in times of peace and war I will be the silver that shines I will be the silver that sh shines the glorious light of Lothuria across the land the glorious light of Lothuria across the land good now run your wrists across the tip of the flame Okay. As you pass your wrists, first your left, then your right over the flame, it feels strangely cold, freezing even. There's some pain akin to the sting of a fearsome insect. Examining your wrists, you notice a silvery trail across them, tracing the path of the, f path of the flame. It seems almost metallic. You are now bound to Lothuria. Arise, silver blade lost thanks stand from the cushion who will be next uh cora your friend has done it perhaps you would like to be inducted well the friend that uh <clears throat> stepped up for me decided uh not to actually do it and you know only one of us is enough right i really am not sure that whole Finding yourself to a cause of people. I'm a bit I'm, confused. I had thought not, uh, you wanted so to become that. honorary members of the Silver Blades. Yes, honorary. Not truly members. Well, that is what we're doing here. The, uh, inducting us with these, these silver bracelets of shackles, I do not know. I do not care. Oh, they're or, hardly uh, shackles. All Silver maybe. Blades are free citizens of Lothuria. Maybe it would help if you explained a little more. Like, we have this, this mirror. How does it work? What exactly does it do? And, and ah, yes. how do you activate it? It is subtly enchanted. If you tell lies while holding it, everyone will notice. And that is it. Well, maybe maybe if if we could question you and uh, <laughs> Visor, I'm sorry, straight. with the other Visor's name. Just, just so to ease my conscience, because you understand, I, I am a man of helm. I have devoted of my course, life. To people I'm of course, I'm happy to answer life. any questions you might have. We need to Great. get some um, more reasonable people in here. <laughs> would this oath Stop trying prevent to me, me in your army. from 
taking action against Lotharia if Lotharia were in the wrong, like a group of Lotharians were in the wrong uh, against, say, an innocent group of Southlanders or Westerners. The, Easterners. the oath itself is not magical. Um, it is merely a commitment that you make at this time to Lotharia and to serve its people. Uh, of course, if you, in my opinion, and in the eyes of the law, uh, not all Lotharians are innocent. There are criminals among us, unfortunately. And while you are to safeguard them, safeguarding other Lotharians against their crimes is also valid. All right. Uh, you know, that helps some. Um, does that does that explain the general maybe, gist of the oath? Maybe if I if I knew the men a little more, um, you know, um, what are your core beliefs? Uh, <laughs> I'm going oh. somewhere with this, I promise. <laughs> I believe I in truth and peace and justice, and I oversee and the much way. of of uh the oh, justice I, I wanna, in our land he, he's got the mirror right like while he's doing this i wanted to give him the mirror yeah he's holding it sure okay yeah all right um well that's great because you know those are ideals that i hold dear to me and then visor the other visor whose name i can't remember addison addison visor addison can i can we do the same with you it would just i i if we're going to be working at least for your organization i i feel I feel as though I need to know. I have devoted myself to Lithuria <laughs> and well, then I serve all trivial. its people. Yes. This should be trivial for you. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm what sorry should be trivial? Again. Uh, just to you know, take the, the thing, the orb, the orb and answer the, the question. He looks over at Delantimos and just like shrugs. like, I don't understand the meaning of this. Are you distrustful of us well no you know i just i don't want my connection to helm my power to be corrupted for evil purposes no of course not no, we I, here I in lothuria endorse helm's ways it's his teachings protecting the innocent is is part of the mission of this country it's part of what it was founded on is he holding the, the orb yeah. right now or the thing? Okay. Um, and then um, about how long did you serve with uh, Lugarius Lothar? You're asking uh, yeah, Del Antimos? Right now. Del Antimos or Addison? Addison, because he's got, he's got the orb, right? Addison has the orb? No, he no, doesn't Del have Del the orb. Antimos oh, well, I wanted Addison that. to have the orb when I asked him the other question. You didn't ask him. I assumed you were asking like both oh. of them. So yeah, I went in and asked him, um, Delon Timos, the one question, and then I wanted to ask Addison. Uh, Delon Timos to pass the orb to Addison and then ask him the same question. I don't know why you need the orb, but okay. Well, he passes you said it. it's an orb of truth. And so um, then I, yeah, I'll ask him the, the, the question I asked him for and then the follow-up well, question. Sorry, what was him. that question? So, you know, what are his, his ideals and values? I, I serve Lothuria, as I said. I serve its people. Oh, great. And then, you know, how long um, did you serve under Lotharius Loger? Logarius Lothar? Logarius Lothar, yeah. <coughs> I don't really know what you're talking about. You mean the current king, Logarius Lothar III? No, the, III. the founder of Lotharia, Logarius Lothar I. I have not served under that man. That was hundreds of years ago, you realize. Well, I'm then, old, but not that old. I, I'm, you know, I just want to make sure the orb works. Obviously, if you could speak an untruth about oh, it, then it wouldn't of work. of course. It, so, so you're saying that you did not... Here, I'll give you an, an example. My favorite color is blue. In the orb, you see his face like contort and shimmer and turn like red. Okay. There, does you know, that satisfy you? This orb is enchanted in such a way. It's, it is mostly a formality. We just wish to ensure that there are no spies working for the silver plates. Right. 
of course. It's it's very smart. It is. Um, do you know Visor Dalen personally, or I don't are know you, of a Visor Dalen. I'm sorry. Do you know Visor Dalen personally, and do no. you know Lotharius Logar personally? I know the current the... king, Logarius Lothar the Third. Logarius Lothar the First. No, did, I do, do not you know or him did you know him personally? <laughs> this is getting ridiculous. Can... It is getting ridiculous, but it's a simple question, just a no, and I'm done. I promise. Uh. <laughs> no, I do not, and have not known Logarius Lothar the First. <laughs> okay, personally, well, I, I mean. I appreciate it. Again, my history is bad. So I'll take the orb, and then I want to try to tell a lie, too, when I have the orb back. Okay. What do you say? Um, I don't like Helm very much. Your vision, the vision of you in the orb contorts <clears throat> and warps and changes colors. Okay. Uh, then I'll take the oath, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to do about that. Please. But, yeah. Kneel upon the cushion of gilding. Sure. Again, sorry for all this. I just, you know, we're, we dwarves are a paranoid people. Yes, I can see. Um, <laughs> though I don't hold it against all dwarves. Repeat after me. Oh, sorry. Uh, repeat after me. I pledge myself to the people of Lothuria. I pledge myself to the people of Lotharia, and under my breath to myself, I say, and all innocence everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> but quiet enough that he can't hear. <sighs> all right. <Jesus> <laughs> <laughs> to safeguard them against all threats. <laughs> to safeguard them against all threats. And serve them in times of peace and war. And serve them in times of peace and war. I will be the silver that shines. I will be the silver that shines. The glorious light of Lothuria across the land. The glorious light of Lothuria and, I say under my breath again, and hell. Across all the land. Now, run your wrists across the tip of the flame. Uh, I guess I do that too. Why not? Why okay. not? Same Magical thing. cold fire. Some chill runs <clears throat> over your wrists and when you look at them there's a metallic silver strand as you ran them over all right you are now bound to Lothuria. arise silver blade harbakir tol mitalik ah that was a very good pronunciation i'm very proud of you oh, thank you <clears throat> who is next cora will you finally take the induction or do you wish to wait for more of your companions I'm still uncomfortable binding myself to a, another cause when I already vowed vengeance against my family my family how about uh, you wish you to murder your family let's do it I'm lucky to grit well with Woodbarrel a more honorable halfling there has never been oh I know Okay, buddy, free silver. Let's do this Takes thing. the sphere from Alec. This oh, is the I'm sphere logic. of truth. It reflects who you are, both to yourself and to us who witness your induction. He hands you the sphere. Please kneel upon the cushion of gilding. Okay. I Please repeat after me. I pledge myself to the people of Lothuria. I pledge myself to the people of Lothuria. To safeguard them against all threats. To safeguard them against all threats. And serve them in times of peace and war. To serve them in times of peace and war. I will be the silver that shines. I will be the silver that shines. The glorious light of Lothuria across the land. The glorious light of Lothuria across the land. Good. Now run your wrists across the tip of the flame. Okay, I'll do that. You are now bound to Lothuria. Arise, Silverblade Welgwyn Woodbarrow. 
All right, sweet. What do these do? Uh, are they I'm just sorry. for show or do they like? It is merely a something? marking indicating that you are a member of the Silver Blades. Uh, it will demonstrate your authenticity to anyone who should need proof. Okay, that's cool. Shall we do chance? Like while Walgan's holding the uh, <clears throat> uh, ball of truth. What did you mean when you said that the statue outside looked like it had a penis? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's Chance's turn. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I w I'm gonna go <laughs> take this. Uh, uh, hey, what's up, guys? You want to Timos just like, kind of is like, oh, oh, oh. feeling what bad a scam. really quickly. <laughs> <laughs> and takes the ball. This is the sphere of truth. It reflects who you are, both to yourself and to us who witness your induction hands it to you. Please repeat after me. I pledge myself to the people of Lothuria. Pledge myself to the people of Lothuria. To safeguard them against all threats. To safeguard them against all threats. And serve them in times of peace and war. Serve them in times of peace and war. I will be the silver that shines. I will be the silver that shines. The glorious light of Lothuria across the land. Glorious light of Lothuria across the land. Now run your wrists across the flame. Across the flame. Right. You are now bound to Lothuria. Arise, Silverblade Chance. A new death. Takes the sphere back from you. Um, Nerida, would you like to, since Welgwyn is so, uh, uh, very well. hesitant? Cora. All right. Hey, I'm not hesitant, and not all oh, happens. Sorry, Cora, I'm sorry. Wow, we got another racist in here. I have yeah, only learned your names yesterday, and it is a bit <laughs> hard to keep track. That's okay, I keep thinking this guy is Viler Pfizer Daily, I can't even get history right. It's all right, just remember I'm the pretty one. Ah, of course. Oh, uh, wow, okay, both. whatever. <laughs> <laughs> You're both quite pretty. Uh, e. Please kneel upon the cushion of gilding. That is inappropriate, Very dude. Well. We are in a workplace setting. I kneeled down. <laughs> yeah, I need an HR representative. <laughs> 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 this is the sphere of truth. It reflects who you are, both to yourself and to us who witness your induction. Please repeat after me. I pledge myself to the people of Lothuria. I pledge myself to the people of Lothuria. To safeguard them against all threats. To safeguard them against all threats. And serve them in times of peace and war. And serve them in times of peace and war. I will be the silver that shines. I will be the silver that shines. The glorious light of Lothuria across the land. The glorious light of Lothuria across the land. Now run your wrists across the flame. Psst. You are now bound to Lothuria. Arise, Silverblade Nerida. I'll bow a little bit and walk back in line. Takes the sphere back from you. Have you finally worked up the courage, Cora? I suppose. I still believe the rest of my party is inducted. I see no reason why I must as well. After all, I don't think we're going to be separated. It is optional. If you do not wish to take the induction, you do not have to. I'm going to lean over to Cora and under my breath, but definitely not quite enough to be like, just add words like I did. <laughs> like I said to all people, but real quiet. I suppose that's one way to handle the situation. <clears throat> uh, I guess I will take the orb. Can see the orb. Please kneel upon the cushion of gilding.
kind of just stands about as tall as everyone else kneeling. Bogwin kneeled on it. I do. Yeah, they asked you to kneel. Kneel. <laughs> Please kneel. Do not stand on the cushion. Is. If they asked you to jump off a bridge, would you? <laughs> it depends. What's on the other end of the bridge? Gold. Like, <laughs> like I will be jumping into a. Pile so anyway. Of gold. <laughs> Please repeat after me. I pledge myself to the people of Lothuria. I pledge myself to my people and possibly Lothuria. Uh. <laughs> Please repeat my exact words. Let's try again. You guys are making this very difficult. I pledge myself to the people of Lothuria. I pledge myself to some of the people of Lothuria. It must be all the people, Cora. <laughs> we all rise and fall together. We are one, unified. Would you like to try again? Peoples of Lothuria. No, it must be the people of Lothuria. To the people of a Lothuria. Perhaps induction is too soon for you. Maybe when you are older. What do you mean? I'm old enough. I can do anything the rest of these fools can do. Can't repeat the quote back, right? Do you wish to take the induction? This, I think, should be done wholeheartedly or not at all. I suppose I can bend myself to your rules for now. Mm, the oath is lifelong. But I thought, again, we were supposed to be only honorary silver blades. Yet this it, is an oath that we will uh, commit to for life? Yes. You're, you'll be granted the title of silver blade within Lothuria. Officially. Again, it is up to you. If you decide not to, it is okay. Um, I, I suppose. Uh, and I'll put one of my hands behind my back and cross my fingers. <laughs> you have to hold the sphere in both hands. You can't put a hand behind your back. Hold one hand. So I can cross my fingers on the sphere. No, you'll drop the sphere if you put a hand behind your back. No, hold it and cross my fingers on the sphere. On the sphere? On the Crossing your fingers, you realize, doesn't actually mean anything, right? And if you're going to lie, like, the sphere will reveal you. That's the point. Or at least you think it will. Um, Didn't reveal Visor Dela. You don't know. I don't know. Did he make I don't it? know. Something could be happening. Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess I'll take it. Everyone else did. I'm ready. Are you ready to be inducted? No, but I Not suppose the rest of my party has gone ahead. I cannot leave them to their fates alone. Very well. Please hold the sphere before you and repeat after me. I pledge myself to the people of Lothuria. I pledge myself to the people of Lothuria. To safeguard them my people. against all threats. To safeguard them against all threats. Unless it's going to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> Are you saying that under your breath or out loud? Under my breath. Mm. He takes Make the sphere back check. from you. I can see that you are not ready. Perhaps in a few years when you're older. 
But Ali got to say things under his breath. He didn't get detected. And he also didn't say anything like that just completely countermands what the oath is. But I'm being truthful. <laughs> sure, the, the sphere didn't react. He just caught you saying it. Yeah. Well, so I need to leave soon. Yeah. Well, I am sorry that you could not all be inducted into the Silver Blades, but the majority of you are, and so you enjoy the benefits of the title and also some of its responsibilities. We may call on you, though you are not strictly obligated to do missions for us, take in anything we might ask of you. But your title may be revoked. You choose to go against your oath. If our title is revoked, I mean, what happens to our oath? We swore, do we get sent to jail or? As I said, the oath is not magical. It is merely to determine your current intents. Uh, if you break your oath, your title may be removed. And if there are further crimes, of course, Lothuria has laws and the Silver Blades are no exception. What happens? Okay, so say we mess up. Not that I am intending to mess up, because loving this whole vibe, you guys are great. Um, <laughs> if something does happen uh, and we end up parting ways with the Silver Blades, what happens to the tattoos on our wrists? Do those stay or are they like. Well, those will be removed. Like, okay, does that hurt? Um, I don't know, actually. Hmm. Looks over would, at Addison. Okay, uh, so. Um, the, the few times I've seen it happen, people are quite stalwart. Uh, it may hurt. I don't know. <clears throat> All right. Well, good chat. Well, oh. I will see you out. On our way out. I'm going to be like, Elik, your question about jumping into a pile of gold. Um, you know, I once met this Aarakocra guy who totally could do that. I mean, I wouldn't try it, but he was really adept at it. <laughs> that sounds amazing. Do you remember his name? Uh, I don't know. It was like Miser or some, I don't know, something, something weird. He had, it was hard to understand. He kind of spoke with kind of uh, a similar accent to I don't know some of you northerners could he could he swim through the gold you know he, I, I never saw him perform the feat but he he had a lot of stories that's amazing truly <laughs> an interesting s story to be sure yeah lots of lots of tall tales if you had if you asked me Yes, I always love to hear tall tales. <laughs> Perhaps you can tell more if you ever return to Thaura and we meet again. Is that a threat? Um, <laughs> as I understand, <laughs> you're headed to Port Grey Shallow. <laughs> yeah, no. no, it's dwarf humor. Don't worry about it. Oh, as we've said oh. Before, dwarf of course. social decorum. Yes, of course. Hilarious. All right, well. You are free to make your way to Port Grey Shallow as you choose. Uh, bid you good luck, and please represent Lothuria well. Oh, hell yeah. Love it. We will do so to the best of our abilities. Represent them like I represent everything else. <laughs> and with Am that... Am I getting paid for this? You're back on the streets of Thaura. He just kind of ignores your question and walks back inside. <laughs> How do you think Visor Dalen was able to lie? Are they with us? No, they left. Okay. That was crazy. I thought I was going to get him for sure and it was going to be like, haha. Yeah, I'm know. surprised too. Probably something where he's like, not that person or some other maybe body. Maybe he doesn't remember. Or maybe, or maybe he worded it in an exacting way where it wasn't really a lie. 
There's no way. Cause I asked if he knew, like, you know, or ever knew. And he was like, no, I did not do not or nor did I ever know. We, st we still got to follow him. I don't. I don't know. Do you mean, do you trust, even though the, with the truth or do you trust a single word out of his mouth? No. I like following people. I'm down to follow him. Sure. You're going to follow I'm him back, back following, into the so. Silver Strand? No, I just think we should keep an eye out. Do they like sleep there or will he like go home to somewhere else? Uh, you would know with your knowledge of Thaura and Lothuria that the visors typically just have private res residences and private lives, though you don't know okay. where they are necessarily. They don't like sleep in the palace, though they may have quarters there. Uh, and they certainly don't sleep in the sl Silver Strand. That's for like official Silver Blades business. And there may be quarters there, there may not, yeah. Just need to figure out where they live. Oh, yeah. I guess the easiest way would be to follow him, but we could also just try to find out where he lives and then go break into his house now and then see if there's any cool stuff there that can help us. That is probably going well, to I do believe that that would be in the best interest of Thaura. We did just exactly. take an oath. If there's an evil person who's in charge of their silver blades, then, I mean, and we got to keep the people safe. We may be able to confront him alone and get to the bottom of this strangeness. So I like the plan. What does everyone else think? Sure. Sounds good. I definitely don't trust him. He's definitely somehow connected to the vision we had. Without it being something. And you're like, Mike is going in and out really badly. Ooh, how about now? Is that better? Yeah, that's way better. It's because I had it too far away. Ah. Did you? Well, Cora's not really here. Maybe we'll do that next time. If Cora is going to yeah, hunter's gonna, mark it's him. pretty late. Yeah, we've got to go to bed too. <laughs> okay, well, we can end there. Um, remember, you have a crystal ball to pick up. If you're going to buy that store, and yeah. then you've been asked by Teluria to go to Port Greyshallow and sort of shore up the town's we'll get local police force, as it were. We'll get there eventually. We'll get there eventually. <laughs> as long as there aren't any other oaths that people have to take, that begrudgingly. <laughs> and now okay. everyone, a couple weeks. everyone has a silver blade except for Korra. Um, <laughs> Watch the next. The end fight is going to be bound by something with that. Cora's gonna yeah, Cora's going to yeah, save no, us. It's a trap. I like. Yeah. I'm, I'm very convinced this is a trap, but that's okay. Yeah, gotta do what you got to do. Got to do what you got to do. Sometimes you got to get gotta, trapped. Got to walk right into the trap. All right, that's what bad uh, do. <laughs> Thanks to everybody who showed up and watched. Thank you so much. We love our viewers. Thank you so much to the players. I love you guys. Uh, it was a great session. Oh my god, the puzzle. You guys were all over it. You guys just fucking nailed Blam. it. Blam! Years of adventure games for yeah. all of us pays off. Even, no, I... Yeah, I, 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 I was ex not expecting, but and you know, partially anticipating total failure. So that was <laughs> quite good. <laughs> Really, the only thing that threw us was the wording on the, which like yes. what the cart facing meant. Yeah. We we had it. We were on. Mm -hmm. That was that. yeah. That got to do an escape room with you guys virtually somehow. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. We <laughs> gotta do that. We gotta do it. <laughs> escape room. Isn't that what D and D yeah. basically is? Kind, yeah. kind yeah, of. Yeah. Yeah. All yeah, right. We've... At least it will be when we spring the trap. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks again, everyone who showed up. Uh, check the links below for our Discord. We hang out there. Some of us hang out there during the week and play games and stuff. Uh, I may try streaming more stuff on my Twitch. I don't know. Maybe some Escape from Tarkov or anything else. Maybe some Hunt Showdown. Some Hunt Showdown or Rocket League or something if I play Hunt Showdown again. Um, 
All right, we'll see you next week for more Tales from Tawatha. Bye. Bye. Wash your hands. That's good advice. <laughs>